Today is Wednesday, September 4th, 2024, and you're listening to the Ask a Christian podcast. I'm your host, Nate. All right, today, um, I'll just give you a warning right now. We talk very little about the Bible or God or Christianity. Um, It's just a bunch of chaos. (laughs) Um, So maybe it's good, maybe it's not, I don't know. So up front, if you're looking for a biblical discussion, you're not going to find much of it here today. So I don't know why that is. Um, All right, so we have a bunch of small talk, and then we get into prepper stuff. How should we prepare for the gloom and doom if that day ever happens um so i don't know food storage communications we talk about that so if that's your thing listen up then we talk about uh we try to go religious um and we fail but we we give it a shot so we go to protestia we peruse all the current events in christianity and each one is crazier than the last one some some prophetess is talking about werewolves trying to assassinate her i'm not kidding um i I read the whole article um so we talk about that. The Pope says it's a grave sin to be against migrants um, invading your borders. Um, and and uh, then we talk about, um, we really get into Christians disagreeing on um, politics. And, you know, what's the, what's the right thing to do when Christians um, just disagree in political stuff? You know, how should you handle that? How do you reconcile differences? Things like that. Um, but then someone briefly asked about the verse that talks about women being saved in childbirth, and we explain that. Apparently, there's a big debate going on between uh, Candace Owens and Rabbi Shmuley on Piers Morgan's channel. Oh, that guy's such a tool. Anyways, um, so if you're interested in that, I, 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 don't, I don't follow either one of any, any of these people. Piers, Rabbi, Owens, I don't follow any of them. But um, I think I'll watch this interview because it seems to be like it's going to be a lot of fireworks. Um, I guess Owens is, o- Owens is like pro-Nazi now or saying the Holocaust never happened. I, I don't know. And the Rabbi Shmuley is just completely insane. Um, anyway, so I guess there's that if that's interest of you, um, of interest to you. Um, and then for the last like hour when I try to leave, I'm like, all right, I got to go, guys. And then we start talking for like an hour about uh, – Trump and politics and the Christian vote and how everything is like centered around abortion and everyone's trying to make this election about abortion when it is not. That's like the least thing that's going to happen this election cycle. Um, Roe versus Wade is back to the states. So, um, you know, there's a lot of Christians saying they're not going to vote for Trump because of his stance on abortion, but then he reversed his stance on abortion. So they're like, well, I can't vote for him. I can't trust him. Da, 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 da. I'm like, well, the glass half full way of saying that is he listened to his constituents and is walking about his policies. Yeah, but he doesn't really think that. Who cares what he thinks? Like, should we not care what he does? So so if he, if he does something bad, then that's bad. If he says he wants to do something like um, that, that's not like completely pro-life, um, um, whatever, like in the pro pro-life camp, and then the pro-life people complain about it to him, and then he says, "Okay, I'll reverse my decision." Um, that's a good thing, right? And it's like, well, he's not a true Christian, uh, bro. We're not electing Jesus. We're, we're like Jimmy Carter. Like we elected a Sunday school teacher, and he destroyed the country. So we're not electing Trump to be a preacher or a Sunday school teacher. We're electing the guy, hopefully to, you know, fix some of our big structural stuff with our economy and trade and country and all that. Like, abortion is going to be the least important thing on his agenda. I bet it doesn't even see the light of day. Uh, Anyway, so it's basically between that and you're like, oh, what's the alternative? The alternative, you will hear, is basically abstain and not vote at all, like a Jehovah's Witness, and, you know, let Kamala win. So instead of, like, slow walking things to the destruction of the planet, um, it'll be sooner than later. Um... Did I say I was not going to talk a lot this time? I don't think I made that promise. Anyway, that's what this show's about today. So if that's of interest to you, listen. If not, um, I don't know. We'll try this again next time and see if we can find some people. Will you listen? Okay, people, I'm going to try to learn how to make sentences while in my downtime. Of the people listening, there's got to be something we haven't talked about yet. If you'd like to know anything, send an email to askachristianclub at gmail.com. You can send it from your phone right now, and I will get it. And that will be the thing I open the next show with. So, uh... Do that. Otherwise, I mean, I'm just going to assume you really like our off-the-wall topics. So take care, everyone. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we will see you later. Bye, everyone. So um, <clears throat> while you're talking about reading books, apparently Florida is banning them. Um, <laughs> what? Florida, I can't think of a better book. I can't think of a better book to ban. So apparently Florida just banned uh, 23 of Stephen King's books from like elementary libraries, I guess, because it's like sex has sexually explicit stuff, yeah. but he's like freaking out on X and like going crazy about it. 
Oh, that is so funny. Oh, it's like, so good. Did you see that how hard he got dragged too? Uh, no, when? About that or something else? Oh, about that. Like, people started just posting excerpts from his book and were like, do you think this oh. is appropriate for eight-year-olds? Is it, like, really bad? Like, I've never read oh, a Stephen yeah. King book. Well, I've never read Stephen King, but they were posting these, like, really, like, like an orgy scene <clears throat> and, like, all this other stuff. I mean, like, people are like, oh, yeah, so Stephen King, are you grooming second graders now? You know, and he's all, like, getting ah, more and more ah. angry and more and more triggered. And he's like, well, oh. do you want... Do you want to, um, you know, have this material in the hands of second graders? Is this like your idea? Could not have happened to a better guy. <laughs> oh, you giant jerk! The guy is such a, oh, just a what snooze. a tool. Hey, random. Yeah, that. I was trying to think of a Christian word. <laughs> that works. That's not random. <clears throat> Yo. So apparently. It's Saturn's majestic rings will vanish in just six months from now. What? Hmm, why is this? What? That'd be... You mean, like, I don't know. from I... visible light because they change their angle at facing the Earth and we won't be able to see them from observing them on Earth? Or, like... <clears throat> that may be what it's about to say. I just started reading it. It's it's on the, like, you know, current events. Um. So how long have we been able to see the rings? Like, this will be pretty big, right? Know. Or does it happen every, like, so many years? Okay, let's I see. I have no idea. Um, okay, in the 17th century. Okay. Astronomy's um, not my bag. See. Maybe if Paulus knows about it, because he's, like, one of these space guys. Get some Christian tarot cards. Okay, so, uh, Paulus let's see. is a space guy. <clears throat> let's just, we're just going to call him the space guy. Because he's an years. aerospace engineer. Like, an article says something interesting, you just automatically have to start skipping, like, to two-thirds of it to see the point it's making. Okay. Uh, phenomenon, blah, 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 will affect the planet. Will become virtually invisible to Earth based observers. Is, uh, there you okay, go. Yeah, still, it's like you're saying. Exactly what I was said. Right. But, okay. Okay. It's, uh, so it uh, occurs every 29 years. Okay. So what does that mean? Um, so um, I should just ask AI this would give me a more direct. It, it's essentially what, what Chris said. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, but it's I want to know how. It's long. a light thing. <clears throat> I, I know. I got. You know, like, I want to know, like, if it happens every 29 years, does that mean we won't be able to see the rings for 29 years? Or does that mean, like, it happens every 29 years? Uh, like, yeah, like. Uh, Just logically, I would expect that there's going to be, like, an apogee of how much you can see the rings based on the angle of the Earth and the angle of Saturn and its orbit around the sun. And then there's going to be a wane. And so I guess we're on the very bottom of the wane and then it'll wax, you know, so that you can start seeing it again after the, the six months, you know, whatever happens in six months. It'll start gradually becoming more visible over 29 years, I would imagine. So at like 15 years and five months, it'll be the most maximum that you can see the rings, I would imagine. Oh, oh, okay. Um, disappearance of Saturn's rings. Um it's 25 years, so Google is arguing with Google. Uh, Google AI is arguing with, you know, Google articles. Okay, but um, so this says uh, relatively short. It usually takes a few days for them to become visible again. So every 25 to 29, depending which internet source you're reading, um, yeah. So every every 20 something years, it goes invisible to uh for a few days. So not a big deal. So it'll be gone for like a week, and then it'll be back. All right, there you go. If anyone cared, I I Hello, don't. I'm Abira. just scrolling. Oh, I haven't checked. Anyone else trying to get up here? Yeah, Abira has got quite the beard. Uh, let's see. Looks like an orphan, bro. Do we know them? No, but uh, feel free to jump up here, Abira, if you like. Are you an Go ortho ahead. bro? Kind of like Courtney's an ortho bro. <laughs> oh, just the person I wanted to see, Courtney. I have oh, questions. Oh no. Dude, where oh, have y'all been? Be Listen, you're never allowed to just not be here, okay? I hey, I was here on Labor Day, and Chris had to keep me company because everyone else pieced out. Really? I didn't. I see think you random. Guys. Well, random was here too. Well, well, well but, but mm. yesterday. Yeah, thanks, I, I, thanks, Nate. Thanks for I remembering me. I said you too. I, I will remember you. Okay. Um, Brandon was here too, but yeah, uh, two, yesterday I was gone. I had, I had a bunch of errands to do and I was like dead tired and I, I had an unexpected dentist appointment. 
um, which I also have tomorrow. So I may not be here tomorrow or if I am, it'll be short. All right, Courtney, we, we had, uh, so I don't, I don't want to talk forever about this because we talked about it on Labor Day <laughs> instead of, you know, like, like God or Christian questions or something. But um, I was wondering two things, what you do quickly for storable food type stuff, whether you like bag your own or just like buy the 30 year bulk stuff. And if so, where from, and what, do you have any advice on like communications, like end of the grid communications, like wide range meters, scanners, those are like an all in one device that you can scan wide range, including trunking and also communicate on it. Or you basically have to get one device to scan all that stuff. And then another device to actually talk, go. It's your kitchen cook. Yes. So I make my own MREs. Um, I call them uh, MHEs because you should not eat food if you don't have a water source because you're going to use up 25% of your water in your body to process food. Um, in other words, if you're already dehydrated, don't ingest uh, food because you're going to pull the water out of your body that you do have in order to process that food. And so dehydrate yourself more. So I call them meals hydrated to eat. Uh, trademark Courtney Smith here. Just kidding. Um, but uh, basically, you can make your own. So you buy um, MREs. Or you buy, uh, excuse me, um, um, mylar bags. You buy oxygen absorbers that are equivalent for the bags that you're using. So if you buy five gallon buckets, you're going to buy uh, 2,000. Um, CC, the size pack CC, uh, uh, yep, the size of that would be CC oxygen absorbers. And, um, you know, you've got to kind of pre-plan ahead. So if you've got five five-gallon rice that you want to do or beans, um, and sometimes the density of the food comes into play too. You know, if you're really concerned about it, throw two of those packs of oxygen absorbers into one five-gallon, and that for sure is going to get all the oxygen out. It will not take out the nitrogen. That's okay. Nitrogen doesn't hurt your food. Um, it's just going to take out the oxygen because oxygen, the air that we breathe is, breathe is made up of oxygen and nitrogen. So you throw those, so you plan, you go, okay, look, um, as soon as I open these oxygen absorbers, it's going to start absorbing the oxygen until they're no longer working. The little hand warmers that you get, you put in your pockets in the wintertime, those are oxygen absorbers, which is why once you break them open, they start heating up but then they quit working after a few hours because they've quote absorbed the oxygen and they can't absorb anymore. So lay out all of your bags, put them in, go ahead and put the empty bags inside your five gallon buckets, pour whatever you have, rice, beans, etc., in there. When you do that and you lay it all out, you say, okay, I've got, you know, it, everything's done. So flatten out the bags, um, iron the bulk majority of the lid. Like you're going to do a, like a Ziploc baggie. You want to zip it till there's just this little corner available. Drop your Mylar, drop your oxygen absorbers in there. Um, and then lay it over, uh, like a two by four with a piece of cloth over it, or use your wife's hair straightener if she approves of that and then just <laughs> seal it up. Okay. And, um, <clears throat> look for any of these little valleys, right? And I say valleys of like air, the creases in the mylar because oxygen is going to sneak through there. You want to clamp those off. And the easiest way to do that is just flatten it out and hold the hair straightener on there and then look and you'll see that there's no way. And so then take your hand and um, slap the bag like that slap. and see if it's going to uh, hold the air. If you don't hear air coming out, then it's sealed up. You got to do that within, you know, a good minute. Get them all in there. Like I said, if you want to double up your oxygen absorbers, you can. You can do that in smaller versions too. Everything I just said works in smaller versions. I used to make Capri Suns. You know the Capri Sun packs? Yeah. Hey, girl, hold on. The Capri Sun, those are uh, Mylar bags. I used to do teeny tiny on the go for hiking. Um, so I would put like a bouillon cube with uh, ready, uh, you know, minute rice, uh, minute, uh, you know, like little, you know, packets just made up packets like soup or whatever and then you would break that open after your oxygen absorber you get some campfire water pour it in and fold it over and clamp it and it will kind of steam cook and then you have soup on the go so there's that um you can buy all of that stuff on amazon five gallon buckets if you have fire what's it called uh oh, what's that place called fire subs no fire firehouse do y'all have those where you're at yeah 
They give away, they sell their pickle buckets for $2 a pop and they are good quality buckets. Nice and sturdy. They even have the seal around the rim. Get those. Just go in and say, uh, and it's not a weird thing. They're used to selling them. Uh, say wow. how many, pi- yeah, they are. I swear. You, you can call ahead the manager and say, they normally go through two pickle buckets a week. Uh, at least the ones around here. So you call ahead and say, hey, I'd like to buy your pickle buckets at the end of the week. When do you typically have them available? They'll tell you. And then um, if they don't sell pickle buckets, just say, oh, I'm sorry, stores around here sell pickle buckets or somewhere else. I was just looking. And they're, again, they, they do this, I promise. And so go in and buy the pickle buckets. Go bleach them, rinse them out because you just want to get the pickle smell out. Uh, set them out on a sunny day and then, boom, you got five-gallon buckets there. Um, you can also go to Walmart, ask them for their the bakery section, the little uh, stuff that they use icing. You can get your buckets from there. They're not as good quality, but if you want a smaller, you can. Um, there's that. You can also just go to Lowe's and buy them. It's going to get more expensive that way, but there's that option. Uh, so that's everything. And you can also uh, buy five-gallon buckets and put smaller, you know, one gallon. And you want to do one gallon because if you open up your five-gallon, you have no way to reseal it if the crap hits the fan. You just don't. I mean... You could reseal it if you have power and more oxygen absorbers, but why would you do that if you're just trying to feed your family for a day? You don't want to bust open five gallons worth of beans. So make smaller packets, put them in five gallon buckets, store it. If you can, store it in a conditioned space because that will make it last longer. Uh, so you can do that. That's And you can fill it with whatever you want. Rice, beans, noodles, add bouillon cubes, uh, it's best to add packets, things that cook different speeds, you know. Some requires a lot of bo- boiling. Others, like noodles, only require some soaking and some hot water. Put those in separate packets inside a larger. So if you have a packet um, of in a mylar, tiny little packet, um, take that, seal that separately, and then take that and stick that in the one gallon and seal that. So just like when you cut open, you know, um, hamburger helper box, You have the noodles separate from the spice packets, just like that. Take ideas from the store and then make your own. So there, did I answer everything there? Uh, Kind of. When you say noodles, you just mean like like (laughs) spaghetti and pastas and stuff like that, right? Yeah, whatever noodles you, even the, uh, even (laughs) like the, um, like, uh, like rice noodles, uh, Asian noodles, like all different, basically any type of noodle, it's just like egg and, and water and like. I mean, it pretty much lasts forever. Do you do you also like freeze like all the beans and rice and stuff before you do that to like kill any weird thing that may be growing nope. before you store it? Nope, because again, if you're talking about like bugs and stuff, all of that is going to be killed off without oxygen. Um, that's the point of the oxygen absorbers. It's going to prevent oxidation and it's also going to prevent bugs and stuff that just come naturally in your food um, from being able to live off of the live while it's being stored. Chris, um, Chris you, says his plan is to rub s- several preppers. I have, I have um, a feeling that may, if they take that care to uh, prep their yeah. food, I have a feeling they take care to do some other things too. So listen, listen. Here's the thing. Here's Hang the on. Thing. Be- be- before you poo-poo okay. on everything, I've got one more question. Okay, the, okay. You finish it, up it, your prepper land. That's fine. <clears throat> well, I'm just wondering. We've never talked um, about this, so it's it's good. So you could also well, my, buy this my, stuff. Uh, other thing is... Too. It's just more expensive, yeah, and you're not uh, going to get yeah, way more much. expensive. Yeah. So my, my other thing is, uh, what about uh, communication stuff? Like, like I am interested in, in like one device to rule them all. That's mm. also not like a thousand dollars. Does it not exist? Um. So, communicate with who? So here's the thing: if you're communicating well, long range, military can see it, hear it, know it, and they can track you. Uh, but so, yeah, like not like more like okay. So if we if Walking Dead has taught us anything. If people are like, hey, there's food and safety here, don't go yeah. to that place. So um, the bed is more like to keep it, you know, to keep tabs on things, like if everything goes to heck. So it's like, hey, you know, everyone's robbing this place. It's like, oh, okay, let's stay away from there. Or, you know, just to generally like pick up what like ham operators are doing or CVs or like emergency Yeah, I mean, stuff. if you want to get so like can... a two-way, if you want to get like a two-way radio, you can. I'll put it in the chat. Um, it's, you can get it on Amazon. Um, you have to be certified to operate these. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, be certified if you use these. (laughs) But uh, yeah, so 
Uh oh, you need a better certified radio. You're chopping yep, up. Yep, her certification expired. <laughs> Your certification expired. Um, All right, it's always in this spot. Sorry, go. when I take my kids to school, it's just that one little spot. Um, but the point is, uh, it, it like tech, if you Google that and then say like uh, I just put it in the chat. If you Google it and say, is this legal to use? Technically, you're going to get a big fat no. Technically. So take that information and do with it what you want. Um, but that's a good option if you're wanting just to communicate with family. Um, if you want to do something longer range, you're just going to have to do like ham and stuff. Um, Two way, like you're going to have to set it up. But the government's going to be able to triangulate your location if you're trying to keep away from whether it's foreign government, local government. Um, federal government. So it just depends and, on and, what your goals are. And is that the same like no matter what? No matter... That won't be a problem. <laughs> so no, you're talking about no matter what you do, like whether it's CB, like they can still like find your location stuff like that, or only with certain other. No, things? definitely. Uh, any any time you're broadcasting any signal, um, the military. If you're again, if it's foreign or domestic military, and there's like a you know, Red Dawn or some sort of situation like that, and they want to locate you, they will. Anytime you have a signal. I mean, cell phones, all of that. Like, if it ever gets to that severity, um, you need to, if you have an iPhone, you're going to have to bust the phone up. Um, you're going to have to um, go to a, a different location, drop the phone at that location. Um, and when I say a different location, don't have it anywhere within the vicinities of the locations you travel for water, food, um, safety, security, none of that. Because if someone is capable of finding the phone and retrieving data off the phone, they're going to see who you are, your location, where you've, um, okay, hold on there. All right. I'm good to go. Um, all of your information, your sensitive information. And I mean like where you've traveled, where you, your phone will tell you where you're sleeping, you know, like where you spend the 90% of your yeah, time. Yeah. And so all of that information is now in the hands of a possible enemy. And so you don't want to do that. You want to drop a, drop it somewhere else, but destroy it first. Uh, burn it. Um, don't just think one thing is sufficient. Burn it. After you burn it, put it in water. After you put it in water, uh, sink it to the bottom of the ocean. Uh, you want to just get rid of everything. No remains left whatsoever because if then, you're really trying to hide, that's what you're going to have to do. Well, yeah, I mean, I figure completely. at that point, I, I mean, I figure at that point, like we're all, you know, we're all dead anyways. My, mine is more like, you know, for, for like just listening to like what's going on, not necessarily trying to communicate, but like, you know, listening to what other people are doing. Yeah. Chris is snoozing. Sorry, Chris. Yeah, you guys are going to, need to uh, murder All right. Well, if this. you have more questions, I guess email Courtney. And Courtney, I'll, I'll send you a, a thing later. But I guess Chris is Chris is going to sleep now, and maybe we should talk about God. But anyways, yeah, thanks. I was just wondering. Yeah, and are, I mean, are, you, are you familiar with the At the end the of the day, oh. on, the brand? like, the best thing to do is, like, so when the apocalypse comes, I plan on being a warlord, so I don't have to do any of this stuff. The only thing you have to gather is not weapons or food, it's ammunition. Because there's going to be weapons littering the landscape. And so you just have to have all the right ammunition. If you've got the right ammunition and a way to make it and a way to make gunpowder mm. from raw materials, you will be king. Yeah, but the only the only problem with that is you can't eat bullets. Okay, so let's be realistic. Sure, oh, ammo, I can you can eat take, bullets. You can, you if can, I shoot enough um, people, I can take all their stuff. Yeah, but that's the thing, though. The only people you're going to be shooting are like Dems who don't have guns. Like you're, you're not no, going to, no, you you're not going to be coming. Aspect. Like the, yeah, the no. Rhodesia taught us how this works, right? You know the history of Rhodesia. Uh, vaguely. No, I mean, I'm probably not. So, a... I, I just so have basically, one every on, prepper one, one should read a story Rhodesia. about what happened okay. in Rhodesia. Okay, before Rhodesia, are, are you familiar? Like the thing you linked in the chat. Um, how will you compare that to like Uid, Uidin, or Unidin brand? Like, do you, are you familiar with that? Would you say they're? Um, I don't know. Uh, go ahead. Un I'd it have to see to it to know if I'm. Okay, I'll send you a link. Anyways, okay, go ahead with Rhodesia, Chris, and how you're going to be a warlord with no guns. Go ahead. Yeah, ba basically, like Rhodesia showed that there were all these Rhodesian farmers that were rich, had lots of land, all this other stuff, and they gathered all these hundreds of guns and. You know, they had their neighbors, but they were far flung and just roving bands of, you know, people with machetes basically went in, killed them all, took all their crap, got all their guns, you know, 
gave them out to hundreds of people instead of six, and they just went about one farm at a time slaughtering all the preppers, and that is the history of Rhodesia. Yeah, yeah, okay. but the, the issue the issue with that is um, these people are obviously not prepared for that, right? I don't, yeah, you could do that in a location where they're not prepared. So people that have OPSEC, they're not going to let you do that. They're going to have at least three forms of uh, security around their house. So you have the first is like a silent warning for the people on the inside, um, like you trip something. If they have lasers, I mean, depending on what security level advancement they have, they're going to have that. And then the second one's going to be lethal, right? It's going to be, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm scared to say certain things on the app. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But like if there's 200 people coming to your house with machetes, none of that's going to matter. No, like, but you don't build it. That's, that's what you want. You that's don't why build two hundred well regulated militia. Seems right. Like you don't have before. right, you have your you have your bug out group. And your bug out group, Chris, if you don't have a bug out group to begin with, like first and foremost, you, you're not gonna be able to collect those weapons. You're just not, right? So you have to gather like minded people that are willing to, you know, rape and pillage and, and do all of that, right? And then that will build and snowball, right? But you have to first have that. So people like myself, we have a group. We have a large amount of people. We are multifunctional, meaning we have different um, skills like herbalism, doctors, nurses, uh, you know, ex-military, police, current, etc. And we are scattered across counties and we have previously planned, I'm trying to be careful, previously planned locations to meet up and what to do if certain situations happen. And one of these things is people that are uh, pillaging, like your, yourself that you're talking about, doing uh because you didn't want to prep and plan we already have that in like the back of our minds we know that's going to happen and then we also have the harder ones to deal with which are family members that either financially couldn't prepare or wouldn't prepare that what will happen is hey i'm really sorry i didn't prepare can i come into your group i'm useful look at the things that i can do Okay, great and wonderful. But then they have people that they love that they will want to bring in. And that's now instead of one extra mouth to feed with skills, it becomes 10 because you say, fine, let them in. And then they have another and then they have it. We're that is a bigger concern because that pulls at the heartstrings. Um, Chris coming in and deciding he wants to take some, it's uh, two in the chest and one in the head. Be done <laughs> and, and um, walk away. You know what I mean? Well, to, to um, I actually lied. I have one more question. Do you have any thoughts on solar generators with like like battery generators with solar panels, or anything like that? Wait, like say that again. Power? Solar. I mean, like solar is great. Like, like battery generators with like solar panels, so you don't have to rely on gas and you can keep it going. Do you have any thoughts uh, on that stuff, or do you do I mean, something else? Like so power? you have to know. First of all, you have to know how to work on it. Second of all, you have to. It's very expensive to get into, but once you get into it, it's worth it. Um, there's a guy on TikTok. His name is Nate. Um, uh, yeah, great, right? Um, he has the largest homesteading TikTok uh, channel on TikTok, um, and he's completely off grid. He's Torah observant, interestingly enough, um, and he's he's very informative. So if you're looking into that kind of stuff, that's more his realm. Um, another thing okay. I'll tell you: Transformers. Just so you know. Um, they actually hold like mineral oil, w which is meant to prevent things from overheating. But if the, there's a grid down situation, it's never coming back up and you actually do need to run your equipment. You could theoretically harvest, um, from those to utilize, um, for other things around your homestead. But just remember, like, it's not going to be the sounds of weapons that will attract people. It will be the smell of food. It will be the smoke. So if you want to try and to, you know, disperse the smoke, cook up next to a tree, like right up next to the, within inches of the tree, dig out basically the roots and cook up that. Cause as the smoke comes up, it's going to dissipate underneath the um, branches and the canopy of the tree, which helps to cause the smoke to spread. And so it's, it's harder to see long distance. Now smell you, there's nothing you can do about that. When the wind shifts, people are going to smell it. They're going to know there's people nearby. So then you're going to have to get into some other like underground type of cooking um, and things like that. But that is yeah, it just depends on great insight. So to yeah. alleviate random and everyone else, and now we can, we can talk about other stuff um, or Rhodesia or whatever, but random 
to alleviate your fears, he or says, physical I'm, pain. I'm going to read this in the voice of random. I do want to point out from an outside perspective, this is humorous. <laughs> that's probably not how you, well, it's not how you sound. because you Nailed sound it. Way. Nailed <laughs> it. No, 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 <laughs> but, that's me. That's me too. To, to, to alleviate your fears, right? Not everyone is the chai parachuting down like Russian Red Dawn, right? I think if anyone, if anyone, you know, people talk about like the UN, they're like, if I see a blue helmet, I'm going to shoot them. No, you're not. There's not going to be blue helmets. Like they're, 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 the UN's like, I think they know that. They figured it out. They're going to attack you with like vaccines and shots and all kinds of like weird crap that's not bullets. So, you know, while people are looking for blue helmets to shoot, um, you know, the stuff they're ingesting in their body from like Monsanto is doing the job of the UN. Anyways, but okay, so there's like Doomsday Prepper where like the world is like actually ending, right? Like in, in maybe a non-biblical sense. Like the world is going bad, but um, there's stuff from a very practical, not completely off off the rails um, standpoint. Like Random and Chris, you both, well, you used to live, and one of you lives in Florida. Like this stuff is not, you know, like once every couple years, you're going to be able to make use of this stuff. That's what I'm saying through like hurricanes, like tornadoes, flooding. Like flooding is crazy around here. So, you know, all this stuff, like not everyone who does this has to prepare for like, you know, Red Dawn parachuting down. Um, it's like for the next hurricane. And then, you know, happy bonus when when the actual bad stuff really does hit the fan. But in the meantime, you'll be able to make, make use of this if you're like anywhere on the coast. Um, you, you know, like uh, at least in Florida, like I've been here like almost a decade and I could have benefited greatly from this stuff multiple times. So um, there you go, to put it in a totally non Yeah, I mean, even Courtney, just having I, I like posted the link, it. Courtney, in chat, if you saw that. So um, y oh. if you, like, I only posted that because I was look, like looking, and that's apparently one of the popular brands. Like, I haven't compared it to the thing you sent oh. yet. Oh, okay, no, anyways. nothing compared to Oh, okay, yeah, so yeah, your yeah, thing's yeah. better and cheaper? Uh, let's see, hold on. How many did this come? Anyway, uh, Felix, <laughs> what's up, Felix? Do you want to continue Chris and Random's pain or divert from it? I don't know. I came in the middle of it and I'm hearing stuff about shooting and all this stuff. I'm like, what the heck is going on here? Uh, you guys talking hi hi hypothetically? Right, yeah, hypo hypothetically. Hypothetically of what happened? Crap hits the fan, Red Dawn, blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay, okay. I've, I've seen the movie. Well, anywhere um, from natural disaster to like all the way. I mean, so, like, or like so your husband loses his job and you got to live off, you know, because the economy's crap and you got to live off a little bit of your your food storage. Like that's the most logical. Yeah, right? like like let's I mean, start with something really crazy that would never happen, like you know, soaring inflation. You know, totally hypothetical. Right. <laughs> yeah, we can break I, into that right now. I mean, my residence is in Florida, and there's water everywhere, and there's fish everywhere. I wouldn't starve to death, that's for sure. Oh, no, 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 oh, sir. You, Let's you, not... would die, you, catch a, you catch a fish in a Florida pond, you're dead in a week. Like, Why? they put no, so like... many toxic crap. Like, well, not even, <laughs> not even that. Not even Not even that. Like, everyone says that. Look, look, I'm surrounded by deer. Yeah, you and every Tom, Dick, and Harry is going to be hunting. And, and think, think about it this way. You've got every Tom, Dick, and Harry who doesn't go out every season to shoot deers and shoot, you know, wild game, etc. hunting. And now bullets are flying in multiple different directions. And you're obviously not wearing bright colors because crap has hit the fan or something has gone wrong. So you don't want people to know that you're hunting, right? And not only are you hunting, the animals are hunting as well. So everyone's hunting, everything's going down very quickly, right? Deer population has decreased rapidly. Fish population decreased rapidly. Not only that, because people are unqualified, they don't know how to skin and then they leave the, the skinnings next to the water. Um, disease takes over, the water's now contaminated. And from there, yeah, like, it's a spiraling effect. Yeah. Well, well yeah, Felix, what I, I was, see that. Well, you asked the question, like, uh, like I have a pond, a big pond right outside my house. I, I just saw a fish flop around a minute ago. Like, it's full of fish um, and alligator. But I, <laughs> yeah. I would I would not, like, I, I think if I was, like, actually, I, I mean, if I was going to die, I may take a chance because I'm going to die anyways. But, I mean, if I wasn't absolutely sure of death, I would not eat anything in that pond because every week, like, this pond and all the ponds around us, they have guys and like four wheelers go around and they spray God knows what chemicals that like turns the water rainbow colored for a while with like an oil slick on top of it. I don't know if it's to prevent algae or what it's doing, but the concoction of chemicals they spray and all that stuff, man, I would not trust that a second. So like really there's like a river a few miles away and then there's the ocean, which I imagine everyone else in here 
um, is going to be like fighting for boats, fighting for space, fighting each other for those boats in space. So probably, anyways, yeah. Probably. <laughs> okay, so maybe my idea wasn't the greatest. But anyway, the question I wanted to ask was, and I don't know if you guys asked this question yet, is uh, for Courtney, did she ever do the uh, interview with, uh, with oh. uh, because she was sick that day. I don't know if she ever did it. Uh, I did. I'm actually going to get it uh, put up today. Um, I did pretty good. I drank like loads, probably five cups of ginger tea, like just feel the burn as I was trying to clear my throat. And I, the, throughout the whole interview, I'm constantly muting and <coughs> coughing and then interacting. But voice went pretty well. Um, it The next morning I woke up and I sounded like crap again. But it's like after I blow my nose, I'm still blowing my nose. Like, I don't know what I got like two weeks ago, but it's got, it's like very mucusy. So I don't know. I think it's maybe COVID or something. I'm, I don't know. Um, Nick, don't, don't take life too seriously, man. Clubhouse has really went downhill. <laughs> like, yeah, I was going to, I was going to ask the guy to come up and, you know, fix yeah. it for us, but I guess he took off. I guess we're not yeah. holy enough. Well, all right, let's um, bring some Jesus in this conversation. Chris? Here's your chance. And random, um, you know, I don't know if you want to convert just to get off this topic, but yeah, add a religious topic if you want. <laughs> this is why eschatology matters. Yeah, I mean, I, we, I, don't, I don't, I don't see that though, because eschatology has nothing to do with a tornado that happens on your house in the middle of the night. Like, mm-hmm. like I get why, I get why curmudgeons yeah. say that and be like, oh no, we're in the pre mill, we're in the all mill. None of that matters. Like, if you're talking about storable food or a generator, like no matter what, what uh, scenario of eschatology you're in, your power can go out. <laughs> like, like it's not crazy to think that. <laughs> Who's not muted and making noise? Oh, oh it's Chris. I'm not muted, oh, but that's gee, not me. It's Chris. <laughs> me. Uh, yeah. And he's still not muted and still not talking and still making noise. It's like he's doing like oh, he's like making coffee or something. It's ma- oh sorry, he's sitting right by the coffee maker. Ah, if, you, if you can't control Clubhouse, you cannot be a proper warlord, Chris. Exactly. I, mean, I'm just gonna say. I control you guys, do, do, so da. you know. <laughs> Woo. Woo, that echo. <laughs> so yeah, I'll be a I'll be a warlord, and Kyoto down there will be my first lieutenant, and. Uh, he will keep the troops in line. Be great. It's gonna be great. Warlord. We'll bring about Christendom. It's gonna be good. The one thing that I said um, is I refused to lose my humanity. If anything ever actually happened, right? That's one of the things that I didn't want to do is lose my humanity. So. Wait, is that an option? Could we be like trans? Chris has already cashed his humanity like in. Blizzard or something? Like, I don't know. Trans- yeah, I cast Trans- off my humanity long ago. <laughs> wow. Yeah, um, what are you talking about? I don't know. It's been a while. I guess let's check protest you. Let's, let's check some Christian places. Let's see what's going on. All right. Where did I have all these tabs at? Oh, boy. Let's see. Protest you. All right, here we go. Protestia. You know, Dissenter all, it's like Dissenter is the same thing as Protestia. I don't know if the same people run it, but it's like basically a clone site. It's the exact same stories in the exact it's, same way. Yeah, because I mean, there's Dissenter, only so much going on. You know? Except Dissenter pops up like a tons of ads, or, or like not ads, but like tons of pop ups. So I'm like, close, yeah. close, close, close. I'm like, leave me alone. Okay, let's see. Uh, okay, where do we want to start? Let me. Okay. There was a good one. I don't remember what it was, but it was it was pretty well, funny. Well, I'll oh, run down it. Maybe oh, there was some here. lady. Get this. There was some lady who's a who is uh, her husband's a mega church pastor. Courtney, this is an opportunity for you. Okay, so you could you could totally monetize this. You ready? She charges seventeen thousand dollars a year to quote unquote be in her inner circle and have access to oh. her through text messages. Bleh. Which is probably yeah. some like disciple of hers who's actually answering the messages. Oh, totally. Yeah, it's not her. Come on. Yeah. Okay. Let's it? see. Um, none of this is flattering, particularly for Christians on any of these sites, because <laughs> it's always about what where Christians are you at. What bad. are you doing? That's protestia.com. You... Oh. Okay. Okay. Cool. So let's see. Um, it's it. it There's a story about students, Michael Brown quick. in there this week too. Uh, yeah. This week. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> he, he, uh, he hung with some wacky, yeah, as he does, wacky, um, like, pagan, and was, like, declaring them a Christian. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. Me- okay, we're going to go in order. Okay, well, I'll run down these, and you guys tell me what you talk about. All right. So, we have uh, five reasons real Christians don't vote Democrat. Number two, how many, quote, shepherds for sale, end quote, were bought by uh, Dokent Research Group, uh, Basham attacks and sour sacks, and appeal to mortify polemic pride, uh, more pathetic fact-checking on Megan Basham's Shepherd for Sale. So this is popular. Oh my gosh, like four of the five topics are about this book. Um, okay, so then we have Ed Young Jr. says, uh, anti-megachurch folks are hypocrites because they attend mega concerts. I don't attend any concerts. Uh, famed UMC Bishop, United Methodist Church Bishop, who denied the divinity of Christ for years, retires on her own terms. Uh, let's see, almost done. Uh, let's see, Trump says, hang on, we won't give Chris any more ammo, we'll skip that now, just say it. Trump says IVS, uh, IVF mass murder costs would be covered by his government. Okay, they don't like Trump, they don't like Democrats either. So, Chris, I'm, I I think you're behind protestu.com. Okay. Uh, hireling pastor uh, sentenced to prison for using $3.5 million in COVID relief money to buy Tesla and property. Here's a great one. Pope Francis says intentionally opposing migration is a, quote, grave sin. All right. Which one do you want to talk about? Oh, and Nephilim are in the hollow earth. So now the earth isn't flat. There's another group of people that think the earth yeah. is hollow. And that is the abode of the Nephilim. No, no, no. There are, are flat earthers that also think that there's like a, a hollow kind of. Oh, so, so it's yeah. flat but, but thick. No, so it can flat be like out. paper. They don't think it's flat like paper, right? Right. They think, they think it's flat like your head. But but is, it's thick enough to be hollowed out so like Nephilim can roam about? Yeah. Yeah, like it's, right. right well, this definitely. diagram shows a globe. Okay. Anyway, so Nephilim are in the hollow earth. I have not heard that one before. I've heard yeah, Hollow Earth, and I've heard Nephilim, but I've not heard Nephilim in the Hollow Earth. So you know, um, you know, CEO's client, right? Oh, I, oh my that gosh, I do. Like oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, hold on. I, I, I yes, I, I know, and I want you to go, but I, uh, I keep scrolling down. It's more and more. I need to yes. skip the first five because this gets better. Charismatic yeah. prophetess says she's being targeted by real werewolf hybrids and shape shifters. This is okay. Correct. Go ahead, Chris. Wait, are there not werewolf hybrids and shapeshifters? Is this like not a thing? I am not a werewolf, Chris. I am. I'm just not. saying. I, this is like I a promise. weird website. What do you mean <laughs> it's a weird a website? <laughs> this is like this is like what people are out there teaching, man. This is and all of these weirdos are Dr. Michael Brown's favorite people, by the way. Prophetess Katie Souza. Don't know who that is. Big shock. Uh, Prophetess Katie Souza says she was a career criminal most of her life being convicted of a number of felonies is that the same one is that the same that's the that's the, that's the werewolf says. lady the one that yeah. in werewolves and shape all right I, i've said a lot i'm gonna hand this over you guys pick one of those things and talk about it let's talk about the shapeshifters man okay you want me to read the whole okay i'll, I'll yeah. read the article let me link it for you so you guys can follow along this is fun we should do this more often i'm sorry protest yeah. you You've got some good stuff. You just have to skip all the regular stuff about, like, you know, which Christian's being bad. And towards the bottom, like, you get the crazy stuff. Yeah. Okay. So, um, all right. I posted the link so you guys could follow along. All right. So, Prophetess Katie Souza, uh, she was a career criminal most of her life, being uh, convicted of a number of felonies and sent to federal prison to serve almost 12 years before God saved her nearly 20 years ago. In reality, it should be read that she's just (laughs) – this is their opinion. I mean, probably true. In reality, it should be said that her um, she's still a career criminal and her crimes are no longer being drug uh, related to drug possession and gun running. She ran guns? Good Lord. But uh, rather a career criminal mishandling of God's word, certainly a theological felony demonstrated that the griff never in- demonstrating the griff never ended. After leaving prison, she wrote a bunch of books uh, and founded Katie Souza Ministries. She now hosts the TV show Healing Your Soul, where she practices and doles out healing miracles, prophecies, and teaches weird and wonky things like Christians can engage in time travel in the spirit. 
She may no longer be cooking crystal. Did she do any of these? We have to fact check this. She may no longer be cooking crystal meth, but she's definitely on something. She is a liar and a fraud and does so in the weirdest way possible, telling her host in a recent video, uh, you know, Dan, I, I can't do that voice so long. You know, Dan, I've had a lot of encounters. I had an encounter with a hybrid that I can't tell you all the details now, but it was a direct connection to my family being involved. They didn't create the hybrid, but they were stolen from, uh, but they were stolen from dude i can't this is stupid create the hybrid i saw the hybrid i think i'm almost done um i've also dealt with shapeshifters i had a werewolf who was a shape-shifting person this is real guys this isn't just like the movie snap out of it this is real okay uh this and this werewolf was on an assignment to take out a bride of satan that they were grooming her to be the bride of satan that she had been rescued from the cult and so the werewolf came as a punisher because the werewolf is an assassin and i got in the way and right. so i was targeted by the same werewolf I, one more pair one more sentence i so i've seen shapeshifters i've seen hybrids with my own eyes i've dealt with them i've encountered them i'm sa of sound mind and this is real if she followed up by saying the shapeshifter was uh, someone in the clinton family i would believe it but she didn't so it's all phony yeah um i don't know that stuff is so weird. But look, can we talk about like Candace yeah, Owens? This is Michael with Brown's Rana friend, by the way. Ah, okay, okay, fine. Okay, I don't Candace endorse Owen... everything he does. Okay, Michael Brown's and Candace Owen. Uh, what what did Candace Owens do? Candace Owen is de debating Rabbi Shmuley Boteach today on oh. Pierce Morgan Uncensored. I think it's 12 E. Pierce Central? Morgan is going to censor it. You know it. No, that's his YouTube channel. It's called Pierce Morgan Uncensored. I know it's called that, but you know if he's oh. hosting, he'll be like, no, hold on, you're not being fair. You're not being fair, Candace. You're not being fair. Wait, you think? The, the, oh, I don't know. Either way, I don't care. I think it's going to be a crap show because <laughs> both of them are loony at this point. You know, the rabbi is off the chain with some of his stuff that he says. And Candace, I don't even, like, I love to listen to her in the beginning, but now I'm like, I'm like, girl, what? What, what is her... What's her current talking point? Like, so, I, I never... oh, blood Hitler libel. Is good. That's her current talking point. Yeah, that that Hitler wasn't the bad guy. He's misunderstood. He was actually. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's why. So she's going to be defending Hitler. Yes. So she's full rabbi. Nick. She's full Nick Fuentes then. Yeah, like Nick for real. Yeah, basically. And wow. so, anyways, anyways. Long story short, um, this is going to be the first time that they've spoken. Like he filed charges against her with the FBI, like, it, so I think it's all just to continue, to continue the bull crap bet between Christians and Jews. That's what I think it's for. Um, because otherwise they would have a full moderated debate, like a two hour long actual debate. They're not gonna do that. They're just gonna get on his show and then he's gonna say, okay, ask a question. And then they're gonna ask a question. And then he's gonna bring up her family, that's uh, her father-in-law that has rejected her because she's loony. And then she's gonna bring up how he's a pervy rabbi and because they have a sex shop with, he's got a sex shop with his daughter. And so it's literally not for truth. This is all for clout. And I hate it so freaking much because all this is going to do is cause a bigger barrier between Christians and Jews when conversations need to be had that are proper. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not looking forward. I mean, I'm looking forward to, to hopefully being wrong, but I don't, I don't think I'm going to be wrong. Both of them are too controversial. Well, and so let's let be me, clear, let me... Candace Owens is not a Christian. She is Catholic. A yeah. Her husband's weird papist. Yeah, well, see, here's papist the... Papist or weird papist? Well, here's They're the not thing. even regular yeah. Catholics. They they reject the Pope and stuff. They're, like, wacky. Well, that's good, right? Well, no, it's, like, even worse. It's, like... Oh. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're like... I, I, I don't regular know. Catholic, make them, like, barking crazy, and that's what you get with Candace Owens. Well, like, basically, she's going to... I'm sure she's going to... Her side has not marketed this whatsoever. It has literally been nothing but Shmuley Beltea talking crap for the last like week and a half on his socials like candace is scared she hasn't said anything about the debate like even to the point to where jews are like hey listen could you just shut up and then just bring the heat on the day of like why do you keep doing this this is okay what's your what's the the time and channel again i i think i will tune in i i haven't been following this Pierce so I about it, but i i will watch this go to the youtube channel Tip into YouTube, uh, search Pierce Morgan Uncensored. 
Pierce okay, Morgan, Pierce Morgan uncensored. uncensored. YouTube. And this is at noon Eastern. I think it's I think it's Central. I could be wrong. Swoop in an hour before, just or just go there, and it should. Actually, I've got them. I I posted about. Hold on. Well, let me weigh in on the Can only thing I do know about this. Uh, I was listening to, I did listen to Shmuley one time. He was like on a, on a interview and I heard a clip of it. And I just thought, how dishonest. Because his whole thing is this appeal to emotion about the daughter's sex shop because that was brought up. He's like, oh, what's the big deal if, you know, I want to I wanna be an investor and a partner with my daughter and, like, marital aids. Like, don't you think married couples should be able to, like, bring some spice into their life? And his whole thing was on, like, heterosexual, properly married uh, couples, husbands and wives, using these, to like, sex shop stuff. And he completely, do like, dodged the question. Uh, because, like, they showed, like, in, in Tel Aviv or wherever the sex shop is, like, their their store, him and his daughter's store, that's, you know, he he's only, like, oh, don't you think married couples should have spice in their life and blah, blah, blah. The entire place is littered with signs with, like, pride flags and saying everyone welcome. So it's, like, clearly their store is not marketing to heterosexual couples only. It's marketing to anyone with some money. So, like, gay people, pride people, like, so it, it, that was just, like, so dishonest. That's all I know. Wait, um, this has nothing to do with what you're talking about because because I had to take my earphones off. I didn't hear a lot of what was going on. But my question is, without Courtney saying too much about the interview, what was the interview exactly? What, what was what was the topic of, with, with with Dr. Brown? Oh, we're switching to that. Uh, just a quick question. She's still cut out. Just, uh, Courtney, if you're there, answer. She may still be in bad service. I'm looking on Piers Morgan. I don't know how to find anything. I, I, I put it in the chat. Oh, it, in was, the it was not Dr. Brown talking about uh, 75 foot tall Bigfoot that are with pink fur in heaven. No, no, no. So basically, uh, it was, you know, ha uh, Jewish anti missionaries, because that's what my channel is mostly geared towards. Um, Messiahship of Jesus. Um, you know, his thoughts on a lot of these things. I asked him a couple questions. Some people, some Christians wanted me to ask him questions. Some Jews wanted me to ask him questions. And so um, basically it's, I always try for a first interview to do like an introduction to the person, to the scholar, and then from there go deeper on a, on a next interview, right? So this one is basically, hey, what's an anti-missionary? I thought he gave a great answer for an It was very thorough. Dr. Brown is pretty thorough. He is a good author, regardless of what Chris thinks about him. He's actually a very good author. Um, the way that he speaks, the way that he, um, the, you could tell how for his mind is still very sharp. So he's capable of, um, when he gives an answer, he'll give a very long answer, run you from start to finish all the way through and then circle back and say, and so that's why, because what you asked me, blah, 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 blah. He circles back and touches on the beginning of it. So like, what is an anti-missionary? He'll run you through about a two minute long answer and then circle back and then touch back on, that is what an anti-missionary is because, and makes it quick, concise, even though he just spent two minutes giving you an answer. So you think he's gonna get lost in the weeds but then he connects it and you're like, oh, that was beautifully done. I could tell that you're an author. Um, <clears throat> so I, I thought I was going to run out of time because he, you know, he's very strict with, as most, most scholars are when they do media, a strict one hour long thing. Um, and I told him, I said, well, Dr. Brown, I'm, I'm going to quickly move on to the next you know, segment because we're running out of time. And I think he was enjoying the interview because he said, Oh, don't worry about it, right? We don't have to go right at one hour, top of the hour. And I said, oh, okay. Because I still had like three or four questions to ask him. And he's just long-winded. But he's thorough. So I thought the interview was good. It went over. So it was an hour and 12 minutes, which is typically longer than I do with scholars. Most of them are like 58 minutes, 59 minutes, right at 60. Because that's what the contract says or what, they're, what we agreed upon in email. Okay, so I got the channel. I found the interview. I can't find the time, but yeah. So it seems like um, like he doesn't know how to run a YouTube channel and like promote upcoming stuff. So there is nothing upcoming right now. So I guess we just have to wait until it starts and see. So if it's twelve Central or Eastern or whatever, but yeah, that would be interesting. Hey James, what's up? 
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, maybe I'm late to the party. Courtney, I didn't understand that you did formal interviews. Do you have a YouTube channel? Should I subscribe to that somewhere? How do we find this? Uh, yeah, so if you go to click my face, uh, you'll see it says I counter anti-missionaries. Click the more and then uh, you'll see my YouTube channel. I don't think the link link is clickable. You'll just have to like yeah, I've got to like copy Google drag Google. that with my finger. Yeah, yeah, it's so stupid. Well, it might be or easier for me to just... search for this on YouTube. What's your name? On, yes. What's the name? Just yeah. uh, type in Biblical Apologetics Courtney. It should pop up. Okay. Thank you very much. You're I mean, while you're at it, you know, go sign up for the Ask Christian Podcast. Just saying, you can hear all of our fine, fun voices. Fine, out of life. politeness, I am obligated to follow everyone here. If anyone else <laughs> has a YouTube channel or a TikTok or a Snapchat that I'm not following, just post it in the chat and everyone gets a follow. That's Everyone great. Okay, so besides nonsense and shameless self-promotion, um, James, did you have any uh, Well, no, it's, it's, it's just that I, I think I've known, I've known Courtney for a while now, and this is something yeah. that I'm surprised that I didn't know about. Or usually people are fairly open about what they're promoting. Um, and I like Courtney. I think she's smart. Uh, so I'm glad to hear that she's making content that I can click on. Yeah, I just, I try not to, yeah, a lot of people market themselves. I mean, I'm just a regular chick, you know what I mean? I mean, I don't know. I try not to be like, hey, And now, me. a like, word from our sponsors. This segment right, is right, brought right. to you by Courtney's <laughs> YouTube channel. Please like, subscribe, Courtney's YouTube channel. Courtney's YouTube channel brought to you by Hey, Courtney's actually, YouTube. I think I might just uh, voice hire you out. That sounded great. I'll do it, I'll do it for free. All right, Chris, we gave you guys one chance to turn yeah. this about God, well, and we ended up talking, about, we ended up talking about werewolves. So. Wait, the time. You asked about the time. Hold on. Yes. I have that. Sorry. Uh, Shmuley, I went to his Facebook page yesterday. Um, Bote, uh, uh, where Seems is like it? like the kind of thing you would have found first. <laughs> what? You said, you said, hey, about the time, and now you're searching for the time. No, no, no. I'm saying, um, oh, you're, you're right. You're right. But I don't want to get too far from this point. Um, I swear it was 12. To, no, it was 12, I promise. Give me. Let your yes be yes, and your no be no. I'm on east. No, I'm on central. I think it's eastern. I think it's eastern time. 12 eastern? 12 eastern. So that would be, that would be 11 my time. Are you Eastern or are you Central? I'm Eastern. You're, you're Eastern? I think it's 12, so it's 8 o'clock here, so it's 9 there where you're at. 9 18. So, 9, so you 10, said 10. it is 12 Eastern? Yeah, I'm pretty positive. Okay. I'm looking. Dude, go to his freaking Facebook. Let me, let me share this. Can I, I don't share have this? Facebook. You don't have Facebook? No, I got rid of it. Ah, oh, come on. Because let me guess, China or something? The world. What are you talking about? Would you get rid I just of got, it? I, I just the got the only of reason to keep Facebook is to learn which one of your relatives is a racist now. <laughs> I, I just got rid of Facebook because I'm like, why do I want to be on a platform that hates like everything about me? Like, like they hate my God, they hate my religion, they hate my race. They oh, hate TikTok my is worse than. So like, yeah, I'm not on TikTok either. I'm like, oh. so why do I want to be here? <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, that's... Zuckerberg can have it now. Zuckerberg's feeling the heat. And uh, realizes that Democrat protection doesn't extend to him, so now he's trying to act all like rolling it back. Like, too late, Zuck. Good luck wherever you end up. Uh, wait, here it is. Noon Eastern. Yes. Tune in right. Wednesday at noon Eastern. So that will be at 11 o'clock my time. Alrighty. Candace Owens. I can't think of a worse cancer on America than Candace Owens at this point. Not even the werewolf lady? No, wait, what about yeah. Trump? What about Trump? Uh, what what about Joe right. the Plumber? Let's not forget Joe the Plumber. <laughs> no. huh? Joe the Plumber is the died. One, is that the one Obama had to have a beer with? Or was that, yeah. no, that was a beer gate? That was, yeah? That no, was, no, no, beer that, gate that's, was you're thinking of in Massachusetts. Was. Oh, right, okay. No, the beer was with the police officers, wasn't it? Yeah. The cop in Massachusetts, yeah, that's what I just said. I was wrong. Who was Joe the Plumber? What was he? Joe the Plumber. Joe the Plumber was the guy who asked John McCain that question. He's like, hey, I'm just an ordinary average guy. Like, I'm a plumber. And, like, what can you do for me? And the media rallied around him and decided, like, he was the weather vane of America. Like, the every, the every man that we all had to, like, be more attuned with. Uh, yeah. He just passed away, like, 
last year. As, as a favor to me, could we please refrain from eating in our microphones? No, oh, sorry. <laughs> so, you know who I have, hopefully, um, I've had him on the schedule for like a year. Uh, I keep having, I had to put him off because my kids got sick. Um, and this was last year. And then I put him off again. He was like, dude, take your time. He's so down to earth. He's like, take your time. Your kids are important. Get back with me when you can. Um, he's a theologian. He's uber smart. Chris is probably not going to like him. Uh, but, uh, Ryan Mullins. That's cool, right? God, space and time and philosophy. You know, you know who will 100% do your space? Who's on here all, like all the time and, and wants to do nothing else is Jay Dyer. Jay Dyer. Yeah, Jay, Jay uh -huh. horrendous. <laughs> He's on Clubhouse all the time? Yeah, well, uh, not as much as Discord, but yeah. Jay Dyer. He's a little bit on YouTube, too. Jay Dyer is one of my least faves. Um, he's like Sam Shamoon. But, like, he's... He well, he, well, he does Sam. shows with Sam all the time. Yeah, I know. He's really terrible. Didn't he just do um, one with Sam? Yes, actually, against so. two Muslims. Yeah, I remember now. Yeah. Um, but, uh, our <laughs> Mullins, oh boy. Yeah. God is time. That's his shtick. Well, see, and that's what I want to talk to him. So I, I'd love to like pick his brain a little more. I think he's smart, dude. You got to at least, this guy is smart. Um, but I want to know like what he, so could it, cause it almost sounds pan antheistic, right? Like God is time. I don't know. It's, it's. I don't mind it, but like I want to know more, like why he feels that way. So I want to I want to bring him on, because the last two scholars that I've had on have been like evangelical. Um, I want to bring him on because he's going to appeal to the philosophy bros and the intellectuals a little more. That are because all these people are questioning things right now. They're questioning most orthodox doctrine and all of that. So I want to hear. I try and give a balanced approach at least. Why don't you bring Chris on and just start it and be like, Chris, just... Well, because Chris, just, the first just, thing Chris is going to do is call me a heretic. Yeah, yeah just be like, yeah. Chris, just, like, just He's going to be like, she's and, my favorite heretic, but still, she's a heretic. What, 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 well, wait, I mean, like, all these, other people, all, all these other people you bring on, you I'm not, can't I'm all, not like, agree with you, right? Like, like, all these people you bring on, like, have to agree that you're, you're wrong, right? Like, not all of them are people who agree with you, right? Well, I don't challenge people. When I do interviews, it is literally just to let them talk. I don't, I don't challenge them at but, all. But that's like, what I'm saying. Never. Bring, bring Chris on and be like, Chris, all right, why? I mean, and I'll bring Chris back on. And let him talk. But, that's the, but, but you can't just bring him on. You've got to ask the question, just Chris, why? And then walk away and make dinner, take your kids to school. And when you come back, like, six hours later... <laughs> He'll be he'll be answering why. Hey Chris, hey Chris, hey Chris, why didn't you burn the tapes? Because there's too many copies. I, I, I think Ooh. I'm too old for this crap. But no, like I um, I would I would have James White on, um, and he's like. I know Chris doesn't like love him to pieces, but who's a good reformer that you would like approve of, Chris? Michael Foster. Yeah, Michael Foster's Michael pretty Foster. good. I would say Jeffrey Johnson. You know, a really Wait, interesting conversation would be with Doug Wilson. That guy's a lightning rod. Wait, wait, wait. Doug. Wait, you don't know Doug Wilson? I, I know faces. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. We'll, Wait. We'll you, you're going to recognize his blog name probably because he has the best blog oh, name yes. of all oh, time. Yeah. His blog is called Blog and Meg Blog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that He's amazing? A yeah. He's amazing. a reformer? <laughs> Conservative reform evangelical. Blog and blog. That's so good. <laughs> Yeah, so what's his thing? Like, you say he's a lightning rod. What does that mean, exactly? Like, he's like a, like what? Well, so, I'm just saying you would love this guy because, like, he took over a whole town in Idaho called Moscow, Idaho. And his church is, like, basically they're trying to get people to move there to, you know, outvote all the liberal crazies that are in charge of the town. And they're, like, in rebellion, and they hate Doug Wilson and his church. And, and like, yeah. They're preppers and all that jazz, but like they have the largest concentration of um, postgraduate degrees of any 
town in the United States. That's because funny. Of his, because of his church. So it's like all these highly educated people. And all these women have like master's degrees and PhDs and they're all stay at home moms. <laughs> It's like, yeah, it's just it's just flying in the face of culture. Um, it's called the Moscow Mood. And so Doug Wilson is like a he's he is definitely a lightning He just put out a whole commercial for their new St. Andrews College that's there. And and uh, one of them was like, you know, they're trying to attract young men. And so they're like, and we need men that are going to give idolatry the middle finger. And there's like a it's like a photo of Johnny Cash flipping the bird and everybody got all upset about it. <laughs> And so it's like it's like a whole thing. So it's like just controversy after controversy. But I think Doug Wilson, and he's a good sport. Like Doug Wilson would be a really, really in, interesting person to talk to. And like, like reformed people are not big fans of Doug because like he believes in something called federal vision, where basically if the father becomes a Christian, then automatically all of the children and the wife become uh, Christians. Kind of like the reverse of, you know, women uh, shall be saved in child rearing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So like, yeah, he's, he's an interesting cat though. Like, and he's a, he's, he's what you call like a, like a um, happy warrior. Like he jokes around and talks and he talks to all kinds yeah. of people. He talks to oh, atheists. Oh, is that the guy you're talking about? The happy, like the happy reform guy or the happy Calvinist? Is that the same guy you're talking about? No, that's Keith Foskey. He's your, oh. he's the nice one. Right. So okay. like he, you, you know, Courtney, you should actually probably talk to Keith Foskey because he's very funny. Um, also, Hans Fines is in the news um, and Hans Fines writes for the Federalist um, politically, as well as he is a Lutheran pastor who does Lutheran satire. And so, you know, the whole thing about um, St. Patrick's bad analogies just passed two million views on YouTube. And so people are like, what? Um, hang on, you know, Yvette's here, and on the Patrick. on the off chance, Yvette's here, and on the off chance someone actually has something to say about God or the Bible, Yvette, what's up? Did you have a question? Um, not a biblical one, just an opinion. All right, I, I quit. <laughs> Did you have a question about Courtney's YouTube channel? Okay, I got a question about the Bible when you get a chance. Well, well hang on. Yeah, it sounded like Yvette had something to say though. I, I want to. We're going right to you next, Felix. Yvette, did did you have something to say? Yeah. When you said not about the Bible, but. So I made what, what's up? I made a new uh, church friend, uh, a guy, a uh, church friend, and he we were talking about politics, and he called me a stupid voter. Would you stop being his friend because of that? Like if so, you were in my position. So the evidence you have given us is, and I quote, "I just made a church friend," and then I quote, "He called me a stupid voter." So if you just make someone, uh, like just make a friend. And they immediately call you a stupid voter. I would probably take a giant step back and not be that person. That person. He sounds like a reformer. Is this the weirdest this part? The weirdest part about everything is that he spoke to me like nothing the next Sunday. Like he just came up to me and said, "Hey, how are you doing?" And I'm thinking, I uh, thought, can, can I ask you for clarification? Like, did he say it in anger? Like, did he point his finger at you and raise his voice and say, "Like, Yvette, you are a stupid," or was he, or was it a joke? Like how Stephen King would say it. He was not joking. I, I could hear it in his voice. He didn't say it angry angrily either. He just called me a stupid, I'm a stupid voter. Like he so what were y'all talking his about? Towards me. What were y'all talking about? Um, well, I, I, I said, well, my opinion was that I don't, I don't, I didn't like Trump and, and he was a real MAGA person. So, Oh, um, well, well then, Okay. I'm Take, a stupid voter. I'm, to I'm, I'm totally joking. <laughs> well, that that but, uh, was enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wait. So, so, so you're saying that he is like a MAGA guy, and you are not a MAGA girl? Is that is that the way to understand this? Yes. Oh well, then be his friend. He can teach you something. <laughs> <laughs> I retract everything. I he sounds like a great guy. Opinion. I wanted Chris' opinion. That's. That's why I have to, Chris. Yeah, I would. I would just say, look, you know, <laughs> you're my brother. You go to church with me. The fact that you called me stupid really hurt, and I really think that we should talk about that. And if he doubles down and is like, "Yeah, you are stupid," then just walk away and just have nothing to do with him. If he's like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize." Like, I'd just say that. You know, as a matter of course. You know, blah 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 blah. Like. 
you know, so I would just try, try that approach and be like, look, you know, the fact that you said this was really hurtful and, uh, you know, it's something to think about, you know, and if he doubles down on it, then just walk away and have nothing to do with him. And if it's a small enough church where it's going to be a problem, then go to the elders and be like, Hey man, this guy's like, you know, running around calling people stupid, like, you know, not cool. Thank you. Because I know it's been a struggle for you to find a good church. Yep. Wow, the most thoughtful and compassionate, godly answer came from Chris. I know. Congratulations, Congratulations, buddy. (laughs) Which is either really good for you or really bad on the rest of us. Like, guys, we need to step up our game. (laughs) That's very good, Chris. We need to check hell. It Um, might have froze over. I know. I I mean, Courtney's still a heretic, but that's, you know. (laughs) All right. All right, Felix. You you said you had a question about the Bible or something or whatever you said. Yes. So Courtney mentioned the the verse about the women being saved uh in childbirth. In childbearing. So the verse is in first Timothy chapter two, verse fifteen. Nevertheless she will be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith, love, holiness, and self control. So I know there's a context behind it, but I heard uh I don't know if anybody's heard this before about it, that it was basically Paul Telling the uh, telling Timothy because he's in Ephesus and they're formerly pagans that worship Artemis or Diana, and it was believed that the the goddess would help the women when they were, you know, um, you know, giving birth. So he's basically this is what I this is something I've recently heard. I want to know if anybody's heard this too. Basically, he's reassuring them that they'll be fine when they're when they're having children like. Like, don't worry about because they were, they were used to believing that the goddess would would protect them from you know dying or whatever or complications or whatever. But he's telling them, you know, basically they'll be fine when they're having children just because they're not worshiping worshiping Artemis anymore. Is, is, you understand what I'm saying? Have you ever heard of that that idea? Yes. Yeah, so verse? I kind of briefly put this in my. Um Remain Silent Women, I think is what it's called, video. I did three videos. There's this uh, Torah observant man that basically told me I was sinning because I was uh, speaking on the Bible and that I'm not allowed to do that. And women, and he listed a bunch of things that women are to do. And it sounded like a lot of what Chris says, but he does it in very like Muslim like way. Like his, his wife or his previous wife divorced him because he was so tyrannical um and his current wife who definitely was lusting after him prior to his marriage failing uh because she was a close follower of his uh he literally only spoke about the way women should dress walk talk act etc he is a man that only spoke about that like it became the sustenance of his ministry, which is very, I think, uh, telling of what a man thinks about all the time. And I think it's very dangerous. Uh, the elders should have said something to him like, bro, you're focusing on this. This is like weird hyper fixation that you have. You got to stop. But no one confronted him. Um, and when people that were not within his ministry did confront him, he just blew them off. But this woman, he ended up after getting divorced, he ended up Uh, marrying uh, the woman who was one of his followers who like literally cheerleaded for him like all the time. So it was very, you could tell that there was something going on internally. Only God knows, but there it is. Um, She basically like covers like a Muslim and like, he's like, sorry, who is this? Um, uh, if you hadn't asked me, I could have told you, um, Torah life ministries. Uh, what's his name? Paul Neeson. Paul Neeson. He's in Florida. Uh, Adamante Springs, I think, or uh, Altamont. Altamont Springs. Yeah, Alt- Yeah, something like That's that. It's like five minutes from me. Um, Is, isn't that where that big Hell's Angels concert was? Out. No, that's um, Altamont, here, California. Yeah. So here's his. This is like his general ministry. Um. But he has like three different YouTube channels. And so one, he does like veganism, you know, one, he does like Torah. Um, one, he does like hyper fixation on the way that CrossFit. Women... Tell me it's CrossFit. Yeah, I wish. Uh, but his name is Paul Neeson. And so he posted something on Facebook 
Um, and so I was like, oh, okay. So he's asking for like people to come up. And so I came up and spoke to him. Uh, I unfortunately embarrassed him, uh, because here he thought like, he's so used to having a bunch of women followers that are so uneducated about the Bible that they wouldn't be able to find themselves at a brown paper bag if they were given the instructions. Um, and so he was just just embarrassed at the end of it. And he just kind of like basically lost it and didn't, you know, really represent his side very well. And so I did two follow up videos and that's it. After that, I was like, I'm done. I'm not covering women in ministry anymore. It's not, I don't really care. Um, and I'm a woman. I know I'm never going to be as popular as a male equivalent. So if I have a, an a male that is equivalent to the same knowledge I have, he will be vastly more popular than me just because of the fact that he's a man. And I understand that. But the point is, I was trying to express to him that there are many things that I felt like he was just misrepresenting and that he had this weird hyperfixation on women. And I thought that that was a telltale sign of something going on prior to his marriage failing and all of that. And I didn't say all this online publicly, but um, that was the the aim of my conversation with him, that I think that you're fixating on this because you're losing control in your own marriage. Um, and so when I had the conversation, I did two follow-up videos. In those videos, I discuss what it means to, quote, remain silent, who was Paul speaking to, was it uh, because these women were former pagans and they were worshiping, you know, women goddess, and they were trying to figure out, like, how do we do this with now Jesus? And this is why Paul is addressing specific things in these epistles that he does not address, address in other epistles. And so he just didn't like that. And so I have not spoken to him since, but I posted those three videos and that was the end of that discussion. I think yeah. the only exception to what you're saying, Courtney, is if the substance of your ministry is about how women should not minister and you go totally red pilled, then you become more popular than all the men. Wait, women should not. Wait, you're talking about go and, saying the opposite of what I actually believe, and then walking that back. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So, so yeah. what you, what you're saying is true. I agree with what you're saying because of the like inherent bias in like the pastoral role in Christianity. Like men will always be received with more positivity by the masses than you will, and that's our fault. That's our fault. Um, and I think the exception to that is if you are anti-feminist, anti-woke, totally trad, totally based, and you're telling all the other women to shut up. I think that's the, the exception where women get untold amounts of attention. Yeah. So I'm, I check a lot of those boxes. I don't tell other women to shut up, but I do tell women to stop saying they would pick the bear. Like, stop being an idiot. <laughs> I yeah. just accept it's that. Um, it's either go that route or the werewolf route. One of those yeah. two will get you on the map. And see, and that's, I was just thinking about it yesterday. Like there's a way to go viral, but you have to sell your soul. And I'm not, I'm not okay with that. And then what I mean by selling your soul is essentially like you have to post something that is super either controversial or um, left versus right or dive into like race baiting and all of that. And that is against my moral ethics. I won't do it. I, re I literally won't do it. I refuse. And then after you post that, you then walk it back. So you post something and you go like, the left is so stupid, you know, or whatever, right? And then you just harp on it for the next week or so. And then after that, you come back and you go, guys, I'm so sorry, you got, you, you're so right. I'm so, I'm so sorry, um, I was wrong. It's really the right that's so stupid, right? <laughs> and then, then the right comes for you and the left is your support. And then a week later from that, you go, I, I just, I found myself, I, I took a break from social media and really all you're doing <laughs> is you're letting the left and the right fight in the comment section, section and it just allows the algorithms to go crazy. So now you're just not echo chambered. You've got the left and the right both fighting for you because they're like, oh, she sees the light now. <laughs> And, and the and week after that, you're inquiring with orthodoxy. And the week after that, you're inquiring with Methodism. And the week yeah, after that, you're, you're inquiring with Roman and Catholicism. Then, exactly. And can't escape because they'll kill you. And then the next thing you know, people are like, wait, no, I heard her say this. Look, and they go grab the video or they say she deleted it. And before you know it, like you're blowing up. 
you're like viral, but you've sold your soul. You have nothing. You're not standing 10 toes down on anything. You're not standing for anything. And I will not do that. I will. I refuse. I will never do that. Um, and I feel as though if the Lord wants my message out, then he'll get it out. I'm, I don't have to do these things. And so I refuse to do it. And so, yes, I'm kind of like anti-feminist. Like, I don't think that women need to be bashing men. I think men are you know, one of the most wonderful things the Lord has ever created. Um, that's like super gross to a, a feminist to say, but like, I guess the feminist that I would be would just be like anti, like a lot of the Muslim women having to, you know, cover everything to their eyes and wear black in the heat of the summer. Like I'm against that kind of stuff. Like I think women do make up a part of the population. I think we should have some sort of say, but I do think a lot of women are ignorant. And now here's the thing. Most women do vote. They vote the way their husband votes. So if your husband Tradward. is voting the wrong way, this is a male leadership problem. I'm willing to submit to male leadership, but geez, you guys, I, I need the men to step up. And the way that men step up is not like, hey, red pill guy here, I'm going to um, stick you underneath my thumb. It is like literally lead. Christ led. People followed him because they could sense he was a leader. He didn't have to constantly remind them, hey, I'm a leader. Don't forget, get behind me. People just naturally gravitate towards good leaders. And so if you have to constantly remind people that you're a leader, you're not really a leader. Oh, my gosh. Okay, the only thing I can wait, that's like when people talk about like like the, the conversation of like alpha male comes up occasionally. We're not going to do it here because it's going to make all of us look like jerks. But it's like someone's like, I'm an alpha. you got to be an alpha mentality. you got to be alpha and I'm an alpha. It's like if you're an alpha, you don't say you're an alpha. You just you just go do your thing and people will follow you because you're an alpha. Like you'll attract that people. You just like, you know, start walking off in whatever direction you're going. And by the time you look around, you have a pack. While like, you know, like the, the betas or omegas are somewhere back there fighting over who the alpha is while the entire pack has left them. That's kind of what you're saying. That's the exactly. only thing I can contribute yeah. to. Have you ever seen a, like I have personally been in the presence of a true quote alpha male. Um, even, a werewolf. It, no, no, no. Like, and it's not only height, right? Yeah, it helps if you're tall. It helps if you have a build. And the reason why I say this is just because everyone goes, okay, he's not one of those easy guys to take down. But I've seen it with shorter guys, who you know, not the typical quote red peel looking guy. And they walk into a room and the, all of a sudden, the the essence of the room changes. And you look over and you scan the room and you're like, oh, he has that I'm law enforcement presence. I'm here to protect. I'm not here to talk. I'm not here to speak. I'm not here to entertain. I'm here to watch, protect, make sure. And it's a different essence. It's not a jerk. It's not a, I'm an LEO, so you must listen to me. It is just... <laughs> I'm here to protect and serve. And it has that essence. It oozes. And people naturally gravitate towards that because they feel comfortable. Right? Now, if you walk up to this person, you say, hey, sir, how are you? And he goes, get away from me. I am here to protect. That is a jerk. And you just need to walk away. But yeah, exactly that. And you can see it in people that are kind, but they have that, hey, my kindness stops once you cross that weird boundary that you know that you're crossing before you actually cross it. Okay. Yeah, right? I mean, uh, someone said, was Jesus an alpha? Um, of his time, I think so, yeah. And the reason why I say this is just because, like, he didn't back down when people said something to him. Like, I think everybody has this red pill I am so big, I can't wipe my own butt kind of like, that's not an alpha, right? And again, the whole alpha thing is just like a way to categorize like basically like how they did in wolves, blah, blah, blah. But no, yeah, I think of his time, he was, he attracted a, a group of people. He was kind, he was assertive when he needed to be. Um, he would kind of hit you with your own common sense. He'd basically say like, you're, you're, you're Israel's teacher and you don't know these things? Like, so he spoke to women differently than he spoke to men. And I think that's, that's something that we should do. I think there are far too many men that speak to women in the same way that they speak to men, like locker room talk. But then again, women speak to men um, in the way that women didn't 50 years ago. 
Um, well, I think and it's also, just... it's like, you know, talking about, um, you know, like saying alpha, that's like basically the human way of talking about a, a natural leader. So, it, you know, to take it away from like the, the canine world. Um, but it's like, I mean, you know, by the criteria I, I think is right that we talked about earlier, it's like, well, look, he's, he's doing his thing. And, um, you know, people turn around. So, like, what better example is there? And it's like, of course, the Christians would be, yes, Jesus was an alpha. Because I'm a Christian, we have to support, support Team Christian. But, I mean, it's also not wrong, right? Because, I mean, you know, look at it. Like, Jesus, you know, sp like, shared his message, had thousands and thousands of followers. And, you know, 2,000 years after his flesh and body was on this earth, um, you know, there's still, like, billions of his followers. So, I mean, if that's not, like, you know, meeting and exceeding every single criteria for that. And it's like, also... I, I, so I'd say, yes, you'd have to say that, not just because you have to say it because you're like Team Christian or whatever, but because, I mean, it seems like actually true by the metrics we're talking about. But then, Courtney, yeah, he, he talked to women, it seems like, different than men, but he also talked uh, different, very differently to people who were like open and sincere versus like right. hard, arrogant, stubborn, uh, hard, yeah. things like that. So, yeah, yeah. You, you can also draw a bright line between like how he treats people who are like unsuspecting members of the public and people who are holding themselves out as teachers and like standing righteously on their 100%. doctrine. Like, yeah. So, so like th that, that's one of the big divides. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like he never like, he, he you walk up to him and he's like, you're a jerk. Shut up. Leave me alone. You know, whatever like felt like that. I don't think around him. Um, you know, it, I wish, I wish I could think like off the top of my head, a, a famous person that I would say is a good, like alpha kind of style male. That someone's not going to go. Oh, you only think he's alpha because he's a right winger, or you only think he's alpha because he's a left winger, or because he's, you know, tall or, or short or a certain skin type, or you know, like, you know what I mean? Well, I don't know. I can't. Think yeah. Of it. Well, what's basically like because there's, I mean, there's lots of those people that come to mind, but but the the challenge for for this experiment is finding someone who's like the 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 like. Uh, gosh, I hate to say it like okay, this, but almost what, what, almost like the least alpha alpha because yeah, like yeah, you know yeah. alphas are are by definition a lot of people are not going to be their tribe or their pack, so they're going to like repel them. So it's like you have to find the most like peaceful like milk toast person who still actually is a legit alpha. So like the one that can have the biggest appeal. So so yeah, yeah, like you're not looking at someone like you know maybe people who are immediately coming to our minds because they're a lightning rod because they're an alpha. Um, I mean, you can be a lightning rod because you're a jerk too. So it's like, yeah, who, what, what are some of the people that would qualify as an alpha who are also like, you know, more peaceful and less repellent um, that can attract the most? And I, I don't know. Just, I mean, think about history real quick. Like maybe, I, I don't know. Would that be like a JFK? I, I, I don't know that much about JFK. Like, dude, that's exactly that. what I, I was literally kind of, literally at the same moment thinking of him because I thought he was, I thought he spoke for something, but I didn't. Again, I, I wasn't alive, so I didn't know much about him so yeah, yeah. Like for this discussion i don't know a whole lot about like you know that type of stuff but i mean just just from like what i do know it seems like that may be someone that could because you know a lot of people on both sides of the political aisle liked him or at least respected him and he seemed to be a person like who followed his convictions and you know actually said and did things in accordance with what he said his beliefs were so i, I don't know if that would count um maybe as a, like a starter but yeah something along those lines because I know Chris wants to say Trump all day long because, you know, he's got Trump shirts and everything like that. But um, I'm like, I don't know. He may be too opposing um, to people. Um, <laughs> that's how you know if Chris is listening or not. He clearly is not. Are, are you listening, Chris? I'm listening. No, it's Kamala. I got Kamala's, to. The alpha. Kamala's the alpha male. <laughs> Just, all right, we're done. Everyone go home. <laughs> okay, look, T minus what? One, no, uh, one hour and no, two hours. Two hours before that debate. So everybody migrate over to Pierce Morgan. Uh, so we have something to talk about tomorrow or the next day. Uh, I'm just going to call. I, I'm just going to call it and say that, um, you, you know, my prediction is Pierce is going to be incredibly favored to Shmuley. Even if he doesn't agree, it's because they're definitely more left, uh, like very lefty, lefty no, liberals. No, he's and, a right. No, no, no. No, Shmuley Bokayak is a right-leaning Jew. Well, I, I, well, okay, so, I, okay, so I, okay, so I, he's, he's odd, right? So, okay, hang on. Yes, he so is the odd. Po well, well, the point I was trying to make is, like, on this conversation, left and right, not, not necessarily all political ideology, because Shmuley likes Trump, 
Like, I'm sure he hates Trump a lot of ways, but because he considers Trump the biggest friend in office that um, Israel's ever had, um, he, he loves Trump for Israel. And that only slightly outweighs it. Like, if Trump wasn't for Israel, I guarantee he would hate Trump for all the reasons other lefty people hate Trump. But because his love for Israel, of what Trump did for Israel is so great, that's why he seems uh, amicable to tr like he's OK with Trump because of that. But that's the only reason. OK, anyway, so what I was trying to say, though, so is because it. Morgan is a giant liberal lefty. Um, so he's going to come out, uh, obviously. Wait, if Owen, it, it, oh, my. Oh, we'll talk about him in a second if you want. But because okay. Candace, uh, I mean, if Candace is going to be like defending Hitler and the, the war, like World War II and Nazis, like, I, I don't know that I haven't heard her say that, but it seems like you guys have. So if, if she's going to do that, he's automatically going to be like, you know, left, like not left, like I oppose Hitler, but like left, like to the nth degree, the other side, which is going to make him a natural ally for Shmuley in this conversation. So and, and Pierce is just a jerk. So, I mean, I predict he's going to be incredibly biased and unfair towards Owens. Um, even if she deserves it, you know, presumably he's supposed to be an uncensored, fair moderator. So that's that's my prediction. Yeah, but, um, so I predict, you know, he's going to defend Israel for sure. And she defends Israel, but she also, or did, I, don't, I, I haven't listened to her in a bit, but, um, you oh, know, she now... she won't defend Israel. She's all well, about the Hamas at this point. Right, right. So I think she has, and the reason why I say here recently over the last year, she has definitely, due to her falling out with Ben, oh, he even called, he came for Ben too, Shmuley did. He said it's Ben's fault. He created this woman. <laughs> and then he left her as the anti-Semite that she is for American Jewry to deal with after, he said, and I quote, after they have like milked her, after they have, um, uh, I said, and I quote, no, take the quote away, um, after basically getting their profits. The American jewelry has to now deal with the anti-Semite, he calls her the America's anti-Semite, um, after milking it for its profits. Which oh, hey. Is, oh, okay. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, I, I was just going to say I wanted to catch up on chat. I haven't been, I haven't been list, uh, looking at chat for a little bit. Uh, uh, Ann, what's up? Like the hat. Awesome hat. Um, but yeah, in chat, someone says, uh, let's see, <laughs> when we're talking, this is going back to when we're talking about is Jesus an alpha. He's like, not only an alpha, but also an omega. Ah, ha, 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 good one. <laughs> um, get, get it, get it. And, okay. Who would win in a fight, Giga Chad or Megatron? Is Giga Chad like the, the meme of like Chad all mecked out, like the internet yeah, Chad? Giga or... Chad is like beyond Chad. Okay, right. Then, then I'm going to say that because if we're just talking about regular Transformers Megatron, is that what we're talking about? Then, I mean, Giga Chad, yeah. I mean, yeah, he, he'd win. Um, so that's, are we, are we caught up here? Let's see. Um, all right, we're caught up on chat. <laughs> Michael, what's up? How are you doing? Hope you had a good Labor Day. Oh, yeah, or, everything, everything's good. Busy. Do you guys have Labor Day? Or is it a different day? Or something uh, equivalent? Yeah, no, no, same day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it's been it's been busy. Uh, schools, you know, schools started up here, and of course, you know, I do a lot of work with schools, so you know, it got me hopping and stuff. But yeah, busy. What's going on today? Well, we've talked pretty much about everything but the Bible. I mean, there was a little Bible stuff about a Bible passage, but um, pretty much everything but. It's been a weird day. <laughs> uh, no, no, James, that you stop right there. Stop spreading lies of the devil. I said okay. our, by mega. By Megatron, are you talking about the Transformers Megatron? Or I didn't know if there was like an, a new amalgamation of that, where it was like an internet meme that like it, it, people were calling someone Megatron and it wasn't Transformers. So or the angel, talking... or the angel Megatron in the uh, Jewish history. Oh no, I read it completely wrong. It didn't say Megatron. Was I reading it? Did someone say Megatron, or have I been, have I been like imposing my own what I wanted to? Metatron. Metatron. Metatron, yeah. I, man, you got me saying Megatron, Meta, Metatron, the angel. I, I, I just I just glanced at that and said Giga Trad, and I was thinking like mech, metal, like machines. And then the very next thing I said, I'm just like, oh, he's talking about Megatron the Transformer. I'm like, of course. <laughs> Sorry, James. You gave me like two chances. I, uh, you said it twice. So my bad. I just superimposed what I wanted to see, which is a Transformer battle with, with Giga Trad. My bad. My bad. So a weird day. So in other words, a day that ends in Y? 
Yeah, what just happened, Michael, is a good summarization of um, this entire morning. <laughs> Understood. Understood. Uh, oh Lord. Yeah. Why my brain. My break? brain's actually a little fried this morning. I, I've already. Been, I've been going since about four o'clock this morning. So oh I'm yeah. I, I severely like lacked on a lot of sleep over the weekend. I had like went to bed early, late, got up early, and then yesterday I, I got a good catch up on it. Took some melatonin. I'm like, all right, I am sleeping tonight. Melatonin is bad for you. Don't do that. I know. I only do it in like extreme circumstances. But okay. and last night I'm like, this counts. So um, <laughs> anyways, I woke up and I, I feel good. I feel rested, but I feel a little loopy and a little off. So uh, yeah, that's yeah. the that's the hormone. That's the <laughs> That's the uh, melatonin. It's going to make you feel blah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it either it either makes you feel rested and, and a little bit like that, or it gives you like giant, like crazy, insane nightmares. Yeah. So <laughs> like, um, you could also use valerian root. It smells like sweaty gym socks, but you could take it in peel form. I wouldn't um, lead with that as the advertisement. Yeah. Oh, I'm just being honest straight with you. It sucks. <laughs> but you pop a you know, couple capsules down your throat, drink a bunch of water, eat a banana or something to help knock it down. And uh, you'll go to sleep. You may have a weird same, like, I feel kind of like, you know, if you sleep real heavy, but then you wake up and you feel kind of blur. Yeah, yeah you yeah. may have that, um, but you will sleep. It's definitely, it's one that's, it's a nervine. It's used for sleep. Uh, but anyways, um, I'm thinking really fast. What do you think about me starting a room and, um, you know, playing the the uh, debate between Candace today and uh, Schmooley. What do you think about that? Or should I just say, to heck with I mean, it? I, think, I mean, I think if you're going to watch it anyways, there's no reason that you can't, you know, put that on and go about your daily business and let other people watch it too. Yeah, I mean, that'd get some more eyes on it. Like, make a big big banner, put, like, fancy little exclamation points or whatever. And, I mean, I sure, that sounds good. Yeah. Um, but, Chris, I, I just had to look. I'm like, why is Chris sending me a bunch of a bunch of people wearing Trump shirts? Like he he doesn't like Trump. Um, he'll come around. He'll come so, around. You're, so, you're, uh, well, I saw well, I saw it. Well, I saw it because I zoomed in. So I I saw yeah. it. I watched it small. So I click over to it, and I don't know if this could PTR, but it's like the entire Tim Walls, you know, Tampon Timmy's family. Um, he like I guess his brother, his family is all says like Walls is for Trump. <laughs> but that is you know I want to know what happened. In Walls's family, because I thought it was just his brother that had issues with him, but um, it's like it's, I mean, from this, it seems like a lot of his family has issues. I mean, it's not hard to see. Like, if you're a common sense person, it's not hard to see the kind of falling out you would have had. But you'd you'd like to think family would give him a mother another chance. So I mean, this guy must really be off the rails for even his family to disown him at this point. Pretty much. That's crazy. That, that's an awesome picture. So <laughs> I think it's I think interesting. Really fast. I'm really curious. Really to... of Satan. Sorry, no, it's my, it's me. It's, I just wanted to say that. So I'll be going. I'm really curious to get Chris's take on something. I'm really curious to get Chris's take on something. So last week, um, your Mandarin Mussolini came out in favor of uh, of IVF, and as as a family that used IVF unsuccessfully uh, three times in an attempt to. Um, Oh, sorry, Chris. That's my Apple CarPlay that comes as standard in my car talking to me. Um, um, so basically, when you use IVF, they basically, you know, they harvest a bunch of eggs, um, use sperm, fertilize, uh, you know, fertilize the eggs, create embryos, um, and then they will transfer one to, like, you know, d depending on what you want to do, uh, embryos uh, into the uh, into the woman. Uh, but then a lot of times, we talked about this when you were gone. You, you can you can yeah. Yeah. How dare we, you had... use the word woman? Why wouldn't you say birth? Yeah. What's a woman? What is a woman? Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, I, Michael. I, what, 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 yeah. I, I'm, well, just, yeah. I'm just curious. I mean, like you know, so here's how he's come out. Like IVF ends up like in, like almost almost all the time in the um, in the discarding. Let's just call it what it is. The discarding of uh, of embryos, and I'm curious now. You know, Trump has in, has endorsed it. He's like, I'm in favor of this, and he has said that he's going to vote against uh, this week six week abortion ban in Florida. So I'm I'm hyper curious. Uh, well, well, you're you're wrong. Uh, well, if I can take this real fast, Chris, um, 
So, yes. well, you're wrong. You're a little bit wrong, right? So, um, we, we did talk about this a lot, uh, which is was why I wasn't trying to blow you off. I was just trying to be like, yes, we've talked about this a lot when you were gone, which is why you should never leave us. But yeah, in short, uh, basically, as far as the thing, we had a big conversation about that. And that's where Chris, could ba basically, he's voting for Kamala so the world can burn into flames and usher in, you know, Abaddon in the apocalypse. No, no. Um, he's voting for hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Trump, hold on. Trump, wait, no. wait, 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 no. wait, wait. This will all make, hold on. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is, so that's where Chris was about a week ago. And in the following days, Chris made a very good observation because there is some conservative person, like a pro-life person for Trump, and they're like, look, guys, this is why you shouldn't just abandon Trump. This is why your voices should be heard, because enough people have spammed him and raised such a, a stir in the pro-life movement that Trump has since came out and said he will no longer be, uh, uh, be against um, the, the abortion thing in Florida. So I don't know if that means he's just going to not vote for it or vote, uh, you know, or vote good. But but that's where we are. It's just trying to play catch up. So you guys can take it from here. But basically, Trump's stance was he thought six weeks was too little and he wanted 12 weeks, which I don't know why people are hating Trump over 12 weeks when Kamala's like, yeah, let him be born and then kill him. Um, granted, it, it's not two wrongs don't make a right. But um, Trump is definitely the lesser evil. But even that evil, he's walked back. So now he's not going to support that because the pro-lifers pro have made such a stir that he's like, you know, guys, I'm not going to I'm not going to say that's a problem anymore. That's where we are. We're all current up. Now, now you guys can go. We're caught up. No, I was saying, remember, he's going to vote Trump to hasten the destruction of the United States quicker. Remember? Th that's what I said. That's where that that's what his position was. I didn't hear but that. Then he you said found out, you said Kamala. Right. The replays are on. Well, yeah, I said Kamala. I mean, it meant the same thing, right? Like he was going to try to hasten the end of the world and all that, right? Because Trump is so bad. But we're saying the same things, I think. So, yeah. So, like, Chris, whenever that came out, he was like, look, I was on the fence about voting for Trump because of Pastor Mark's argument that Christians are called to be salt and light. Therefore, light, meaning we share the gospel, we show people the way to heaven, we show people Jesus, and salt, meaning we do what's in our power to cur curtail evil. Um, you know, just like you cure meat, like salt would, like we keep back evil as much as we can. So as much as we can, maybe whatever political candidate is vastly less evil than the vastly more evil. And Trump, uh, Chris was about to be sold on that argument and vote for Trump. And then he heard about the abortion ban in Florida and how Trump was going to come out against it and say, no, no, we need more time. And that's when he said he wants to, you know, hate, hasten the destruction of the world and all that, which I just assumed he meant vote for Kamala. I think he actually did say that. Well, no, I did minute. say that, remember? No. Because I wanted to bloody punish everyone who gave us Trump to make sure that all Trump voters go to concentration camps by voting for Kamala. Yes, yeah, right. and then learned... I said no, and then I said, wait, why would you not just vote Trump if you think he's the destruction? Why would you not just vote Trump? That would hasten <laughs> it. And he said, ah. <laughs> that was a very good point, too. So the point is, Chris shared something that was not our point, but it was a good lesson. So instead of having Trump, who is like, like knight in shining armor compared to the other side, doesn't matter how evil you think he is, I don't think he's that evil, but I mean, it doesn't matter how evil you think he is compared to the opposition, it, it, it is vastly more evil. So the lesson we've learned is don't just write off your political candidate, whoever that is in the future, if we have elections again. Um, but it's like, you know, chirp at them, get all your people to email them, their campaign, spam them, like be a thorn in their side until they change their ways. Well, apparently this pro-life group did that and Trump changed his ways. So now he's not going to try to vote against uh, the abortion ban. So that is a good thing. And yes, Michael, your IVF question somewhere in there. Um, it's not good. And, you know, we talked a lot about it because it's like, if you like, I know you're not a Trump fan, but it's like, you can't say he's like, you know, an, an evil, amoral, whatever, super villain genius. And then in the next breath, be like, you know, he's so stupid. He's such an idiot. So somewhere in there, like IVF is not, if someone just says, hey, explain I, IVF. Um, not a lot of people are going to piece it together. They're going to think, well, it has something to do with medicine and, you know, it helps people have babies and blah, blah, blah. And they do something with the egg and sperm. Not a lot of people are going to be like, ah, conception, therefore lots of un unrealized lives flushed down the drain. Like it's going to take someone to maybe nudge the, the average bear in that direction and be like, oh, right. I do need to think about that a little more because I'm not thinking about abortions like that. Like, is, is that what it is? So either Trump knows what he's doing because he's so smart and should be a doctor. Or if he's so dumb, how can you really fault him for his stance on IVF if you're like, 
Well, yeah, why should he know what that is? I barely know what that is. Okay, sorry to monologue. What's up, Michael? <laughs> well, you, know, you don't necessarily need to know what that is, but if somebody you know who's going to be responsible for, or at least partially responsible for policy uh, in the country should maybe know a little bit about it. But he won't be. Federally, he won't be. Like the only part he'd be responsible for is his vote as a citizen in Florida, because that's where he lives. We get to vote. That's fair, right? Um, so if he no, voted for that, he, he, w- he oh, talked about on. passing a on. national law about IVF to force insurance ca- carriers to cover it, Nate. But do does anyone think that's – okay, so I mean I guess if you think he's going to have the political will and power to do that, I mean when that happens, I guess you can make that argument. But he's already made it very clear – that um, that's not going to be a priority like on the radar. So, I mean, I, I see that as one of the things which is about the only problem I had with Trump in the last time is, you know, he made the campaign promise that he was going to get rid of artificial lines, again, dealing with insurance companies so it doesn't have artificial lines over states. That's one of the only promises he made that he didn't keep. And I I'm, don't like him for that. I, I mean, I, I dislike that he wasn't able to do that. But that being said, um, you know, he's fulfilled like 98 percent of the promises he made compared to every other politician in history who fulfills like, I don't know, maybe 10 percent if they're lucky. So, I mean, again, comparing, I think he's I think he was a great president. I think he made some stupid decisions along the way. I think he is his own worst enemy with the things he says sometimes that's just boneheaded or stupid. And it's like, dude, why are you shooting yourself in the foot right now? Um, But as far as when it comes to what he's actually doing for the country, it's in line with what I want him to do. So like economic success, you know, putting a strong foot forward for people that, you know, instead of giving billions and billions and trillions of dollars to countries that hate us, he's like, no, people that want to take advantage of us. And then the other thing about like embargoes, right? Or, or uh, tariffs, like Kamala and Walls, I guarantee you're going to hear it if they actually have the debate and she goes through with it. She's going to be like, oh, you want to raise the prices and tariffs and da, da, da. That's going to be passed on the consumer. No, it's not. It's either going to force China to lower their prices, prices, which they did so they can compete. And then it doesn't raise prices for the consumers because the consumers have other choices from every other country in the world who is selling us stuff, who are not, uh, you know, who are not ripping us off. So we're not putting tariffs. So it's like, well, hey. China, if we want to buy something from you um, and you're not going to play fair, then you're going to have a 25% tariff. Oh, well, we're going to pass that on to the consumer. Ha, ha, ha. Great. We're going to buy something made from Portugal instead. Oh, crap. I guess we won't raise our price and pass it on to the consumer. I'm trying to let someone else your, talk. Your <laughs> grasp of economics is truly breathtaking. Chris, you say this a lot, but then when you actually find out, like two hours later, you're like, hey, I guess we weren't so far apart. Okay, so let's do this simply because, you know, I have to go soon. So if you sell a cheeseburger from China and you're like, ah, American, so dumb. I'm selling you a cheeseburger from China. Uh, is that is that inappropriate? Anyways, and then there's someone else oh from gosh. Portugal and there's someone else from Portugal selling a cheeseburger, right? Uh-huh. And, beca- and because whatever reason, um, there, there's some kind of dispute or discrepancy, and they're like, if you do this, we're going to put 25% tariffs on your cheeseburgers. And it's uh-huh. like, okay, well, if you do that, we're going to add 25% to the price, and so we're not losing money. That just makes it 25% more expensive for the customer. But then the customer is like, oh, no, this Chinese cheeseburger went up 25%. Oh, but this one from Portugal that doesn't have tariffs is 25% cheaper. I'll uh-huh. buy a Portuguese cheeseburger. Yeah, that's just not how it works. Well, it's how it worked for four years when he was in office. No, it wasn't. But okay, anyway, I, I, I mean, without drawing a bunch of supply and demand curves for you, like yeah, I we mean, don't need a full economics. Yeah, yeah I mean, oh, uh, well, I could well, show you where I could show you where your analysis is simplistic and it has to do with a lot of calculus. Uh, well, I don't dis I don't dispute that. But by the time all is said and done. Would you rather have 2016 to 2020 prices or would you rather have 2020 to 2024 prices? Just, you know, without calculus and economics, just right. Yeah. Well, inflation is a different thing, but like any tariffs would also increase inflation. So like, yeah. So again, our problem is not that China is selling us cheap crap. Our problem is that we have outsourced manufacturing to foreign countries. Um, you know, and so generally high paying manufacturing jobs are been have been outsourced to other countries. And so 
people in the blue collar industries are having a much harder time making ends meet. You know, there's just all of this economic upheaval due to globalism, but there's no, there's no putting the toothpaste back in the tube. You're not going to bring those manufacturing jobs back to the United States. You have to innovate here to create other kinds of jobs. Um, you know, but the, the other scam that they're going to try to pull up is like, oh, you're going to do the green jobs and, you know, like it, it's just nonsense. But like, yeah, I mean, Trump's economic policies. Did you also see the, what he said to RFK? Um, well, I, I mean, he said a few things. What are you talking about? He specifically said that he's going to give the finger to all these right wingers and that he's done listening to the right wing and he's adopting like Tulsi Gabbard and RFK on everything. Well, I would say I have not heard that, but like the last thing you said, he said that you said you would give me a clip or a video or something. Yes, um, I, well, did, I think you did, but you don't have was on Twitter. X. So, well, well, right. But I mean, it, it, I mean, if it's, it seems like if it's a reputable from source, it wouldn't be like from x.com it would be well, something it was just a local someone it was a local well, tv well, broadcast I, like a, you well, know, right. i'm sure it's so, in the so, south florida link well yeah that's what i'm saying so like if it's from a, a reputable place that presumably x is not the source it would just be shared on x so if it could be shared on x well i mean couldn't you just find like abc.com or wherever the source is from and, yeah anyways anyway. but i would just say I, I don't disagree with what you're saying um but when he was here it seemed like he was really trying to bring manufacturing back here. So even though maybe you would see that as not the best way to do it or putting the toothpaste back in, it still seemed like strides were being made in that direction. The unfortunate thing is we're, we're like a high risk country right now, right? Because we have president elections every four years. So it's a double edged sword. Um, if you elect a dictator for life, you have some sort of stability. It could be bad stability, but if you have, you know, free and fair elections, if that can ever happen, um, it, it has a potential to change every four years. So you may not want to be a manufacturer in a place that's that, that risky. Every four years, you have to know if it's gonna help or hurt your business. So, but I mean, it, still, it seems like things were being manufactured. And it's like, as far as the economics, it's directly tied to energy, a, a lot of it. Um, and it's like, we, we can't, uh, you know, for manufacturing, like the Keystone Pipeline and the oil and the energy and natural gas and all this other stuff, like we, we don't get that from other places, like we're setting on it. So as far as manufacturing, that's toothpaste that's never came out of the tube because it can't come out of the tube. Like the only way for it to come out of the tube is to hollow out the, the Americas and get rid of our energy supply. So, I mean, I think if you're talking about like other economic stuff, like cars and machines and things like that, I don't disagree. Like you have a point. But if we're talking about like the biggest source of our economy or, or what could be our economy, it's energy. And energy is also security. So it's like you get a you get like a two for deal there by tying in energy, the Keystone Pipeline, all this other stuff. That, that's all. I don't know. I mean, the long and short of it is I know yeah. you agree with, you know, Trump's policies on the way you lived your life and would like to live your life. It's some of the moral, theological type stuff that you, I, I guess, don't like Trump for. And then like yeah. the stuff that housewives don't like him for, like saying stupid things, um, saying, I don't know, maybe, maybe being extra abrasive or you, you may actually like that about him. But um. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, look, my, my whole thing with Trump is that you just don't ever know where he's going to stand because he has absolutely no principles. Like, no, it, you, yeah. I know you think he does, but if, if, if murdering millions of babies will get him some other trading card that he wants, he's totally down to do that. If I know that you trade in America will get him some other trading <laughs> card that he wants. He will totally do that. Like See, it, there's no doubt in my mind that Trump will literally do anything. If it gets him, whatever the deal is that he's trying to get at the moment, except because that's just, he has no principles. Except that's what you're saying. Like when you, you, you deal in absolutes to deal in absolutes is the easiest way to be defeated. Like you could say almost always or almost no principles like social issues or, or social issues like LGBT stuff. Like I think he has his middle of the road, right? Like abortion issues. I, I, I we talked about this, right? Was it you or someone else? Maybe it's someone else. But it's like, look, I, I think he has a middle of the road and he can be swayed a pretty good degree about moral and uh, social issues and social justice. So it's like, you know, do I think he believes in traditional marriage? Yes. Like, do I think he was raised with his, you know, his, his parents, like German and Scottish ancestry and, you know, 
um, religious values. Well, I mean, of course he was raised that way. You could say it didn't take, but he has an understanding. So if he's like, if someone's like, hey, do you think traditional marriage, you know, do you agree with that more than like homosexual unions or something? He would probably say yes. That's where you would have a point. If you say, okay, well, if you can win the presidency, would you say that gay marriage is fine? Then I think he would compromise and be like, well, sure, because it's not that important to him. But when you say he has no principles, he'd kill a million babies to win the election. He'd sell out to China. No, that's Walls, who's actually a communist who lived in China, handing out like red flyers for like Mao Zedong in the 70s. So you've got Kamala, who's like the young communist party leader or whatever. Like they've got videos of them of this. And you, like Biden, like if you want people who sell out to, to China, it's not would they, it's they did. So whenever you say Trump would do that, I, I think that would be like a principle he believes in and he won't compromise on, which is the whole reason he's running, one of the reasons he's running for president. So you can see for the last 40 years, as long as I've been alive, he's been railing on China and all these like people and unfair trade and taking advantage of us. So no, I don't think there's a second that he would, you know, I think that would be the hill he would die on. Um, so if we're talking about social issues, sure, I think he would comp. And it's not even that he would compromise. It's that he has a lot of gray area in his own moral code that he just doesn't really care. Like he has his preferences. Like if you say, should babies be, uh, you know, like the governor Northam or whatever in Virginia, he's like, you know, we'll bring the little baby out. We'll let the mama have the baby. We'll wrap it all nice in a blanket and keep it comfortable. And then we'll have a conversation with the mama and say, mama, what should we do now with the doctor? And then we'll decide how to handle the baby. Meaning after birth abortions, I think Trump would be like, no, that's absolutely disgusting. I will not stand for that. But if you talk about IVF or six versus 12 weeks or something like that, he'll be like, yeah, I, I see it as all like similar. I don't care. Or like the Christians like bursting into flames because they're like conception begins at life. The Christian should have that approach. But for, for Trump, um, I think that would be a gray area. But if you say, hey, can we have babies and then kill them? He'll be like, absolutely not. That's murder. That's disgusting. Um, so he still has some sort of, you know, like human approach. Anyways, all that to say, I think you'll find principles like the big ones like uh, not theological or spiritual, but for the world and politics we live in, like national, national security, national pride, borders, military. And I expected Michael to like, I was waiting for it. It was like a hook in the water with a big fat juicy bait. I was waiting for him to like, you know, talk about the Arlington thing, how like all the Democrats are saying it was disrespectful and he shouldn't be politicizing it and making a big scene and how dare him give a thumbs up to someone at the, at the Arlington Cemetery. Meanwhile, it's the Gold Star families of like the 13 people left at was Abbey Gate or whatever, left in Afghanistan that Biden left to be murdered and wouldn't let them, uh, you know, take out the terrorists. So they all got bombed to death and died. That's who they should be mad at. But those Gold Star families are the ones who invited Trump there. So if he wouldn't have gone, what would they have been saying now? Oh, Gold Star family requested his presence and he didn't even attend. He doesn't have time for our families. But you always see when something happens, he goes to the families, he gives them attention, he gives them phone calls, he gives them the time of day. None of our other leaders do, at least not in the last four years. Um, so that, that's the kind of stuff I think we disagree on. So I can agree with you on a lot of the moral gray area. They would be like, sure, if it's six, six weeks, 12 weeks, whatever, I don't care. Well, 12 weeks get me elected, fine. Then I'm for a 12-week abortion ban. 15 weeks, fine, 15 weeks. While you're over here cringing as a Christian, and I am too on that part, um, he would still have his limits. But that, that's all I'm saying. So, I mean, and oh, and then, by the way, the Gold Star families who invited him, like they have been lambasting all of the Democrats. And it's funny because you won't see this anywhere. But like, I, I guess Fox News, to their credit, they're still somewhat at least playing the part of conservative, but at least on their channel, they're having the interview of like, I, I, at least like seven out of the 13 people, uh, the families who are like, why are they doing this? Like, they're disgusting. Like, you know, we called Biden, we called Kamala. None of them would return our call. None of this would answer. None of them would give us the time of the day. Like, no, what Trump did is amazing. Like we wanted him there. We want but, him. <laughs> Nate, no, none of this matters. In what context? What difference does it make? Like, it doesn't make any policy in, difference in, in, whatsoever. In heaven, in, in the scheme of the universe, then sure. For like, the but, political but like, landscape? But again. again, this isn't gaining him any voters. Like, you know, he he is trying to gain voters on the left. And he his whole thing is that he has been told that folks like yourself, he can literally murder as many babies as he wants and you will still vote for him because you're under this delusion that he somehow cares about these things. Um, which is kind of what you just said in the last 10 minutes, but like, 
you know, he's trying to gain voters on the left and it's just not going to happen. It's a bad strategy. And what he's doing is he is alienating millions of evangelical voters who are not going to vote for him. You know, I was on the fence. I was thinking about voting for him, but now this IVF stuff and all this other thing, like, I'm just like, no, I'm done. Like, well, you know, like and James, pedal man. is, but pedal is totally correct too. Pedal in the chat was basically like, yeah, what we're training them to do is totally ignore evangelical voters uh, make the Republican Party permanently pro-choice uh, because they know that we're going to not vote for the crazy communists. So, you know, and and all that's doing is moving the Overton window to the left. And this is the effect that Trump is having. This is why I talked about, like, why Trump is really, really, really bad for America. And that is because long term in the next 20 or 30 years, he's moving the Republican Party so far to the left that we will have no choices and you are hastening the demise of our own children by compromising and voting for Trump. That is the well, argument. It, well, isn't that what you said you wanted? To well, hasten I was the joking so around, the... but like, you know, okay, well, yeah, yeah, but I, I mean, I like, but, but... that's the thing though, man, is like, you know, it's not us who are going to pay for this, you know, for this flirtation with a populist with Trump. It's the kids that are going to pay for it. And, you know, their kids. And so they will be the ones who will end up in the concentration camps and brutally tortured and murdered. Great. But you said a couple things. You said, like, I've, I've been duped and basically with no evidence, but my evidence is my entire life. So he has been saying and sticking and acting in accordance with these principles you say he doesn't have um, about, you know, the these like security, trade, economics, blah, blah. Like, so, I mean, the evidence is 40 years of evidence. How can you say there's no evidence and he, we're so gullible and we're so dumb? Like, he has, like, he has towed this line for years. Um, so there's that. And then you're like, I don't see this. No, I do see it. And that that's like the long game, right? So it's like, and I make this point. And I think that's the difference. Like, I can see the problems with him as a supporter of him, and I can admit it. Um, and I can say there's things I don't like, like your criticisms, your uh, your assessment, I think is probably true. And I don't like that in 30 years, that's what could happen. Because, you know, bringing Gabber, uh, Tulsi Gabbard, bringing RFK on board, like it, it may be good to get some libertarian votes. I mean, like maybe 6%. Um, but I mean, it may be good for the short term. But what it's doing is is basically bringing America, bringing the Republican Conservative Party um, back to like the 1960s Democrats. So it's basically saving the country, everything that's happened since the JFK pretty much. So, so basically by voting for Trump, we're going back to JFK plus more leniency on abortion. So I don't want that. Like uh, I don't, I wasn't around the sixties. I don't know if I would have been on JFK side or not. Um, I like to think maybe not, but I, I, I don't know. Um, so that's what's happening and it's what you say. So we agree, but then I don't think, I think the problem with you is you, you can't meet me halfway and see the other side. Like if I see the bad and I'm like, yeah, Chris, what you said is true. The Overton window is moving and this is going to be very bad in 30 or 40 years versus if Kamala wins, it's going to be very, very bad in the next eight months. Um, and then you right, have to, but, you but have you to have take to what, 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 what I, I know, but hold on, hold on. Here's the long term. It, it's, it's, it's a, the long term is two sides. So the long term, and I agree, we agree with this. I guarantee you're going to agree with the premise. The long term is either you you white knuckle it right now and say, no, I will not budge. And me and eventually other conservatives are going to say no more, no more. Here's the line, no further. <laughs> and either the Republican Party, including Trump, or if it's after Trump, is going to say, you know what, we've lost all of our evangelical, evangelical support. We cannot win unless we return to a more godly base. And then that would put this thing truly right um, it may take a long time. There's all kinds of things that could go wrong, but that is one viable solution. You you just like force it through the religious vote and say, if you want our vote, you will follow, you know, godly values. That is a gamble. Um, the other side is a gamble too. Like saying, well, look, we're supposed to be salt. So we need to do everything in our power to choose the less evil and to prevent evil. So if that means choosing the lesser evil, a significantly less evil. It's not like these scales of evil are even in co co comprehension. Like one evil, the Democrats are vastly more evil than the Republicans, including Trump and all this stuff right now. But still, it's choosing the lesser of the evil to slow the decay. And at that point, I don't know how you could tell a Christian um, one way or another, like vote for Trump or don't or, or don't vote at all. 
um, because it is a gamble no matter how you look at it. So the, the gamble is, and you know this, and we agree, I think. So the gamble is all the evangelicals, all the Christians join together and say the Republican Party is not getting another vote and hope that sooner rather than later, that makes the Republicans kowtow to Christianity. Um, whether they will or whether they not, maybe that wouldn't work. Maybe they'll go full liberal and say, you know what? The, you know, the Christians want too much. If we give them everything they want, we'll never win because we're alienating too many other people. So let's just all go into LGBT pedophiles and Satan. And now you have two parties who are trying to race each other to the bottom. And, and there's no there, no way at that point. You have to follow your convictions. So it seems like, and by the way, you're kind of like a, I don't want to say you're like the book of James, like a double, double-minded man, but you know, you were against Trump, then you were going to vote Trump because he was less bad. Now you're going to vote Trump, but you've gone back and forth on Trump. I still don't know where you actually end up in election time. Um, but yeah, I mean, would you disagree with that? Like, no matter what we do, I see your side and agree with it to a point, but it is a huge gamble. And my conviction is I need to go with the side that is vastly less evil for right now um, than take another huge risk that that is not certain later. Right. So, so my only argument after all that is that it's not a huge gamble in terms of the future of the Republican Party. If Trump loses by adopting all these left wing, this left wing nonsense, the Republican Party will have to do some soul searching and be like, oh, man, maybe we shouldn't have abandoned all of our conservative principles in order to just win with a populist platform. Maybe that was a bad idea. And if that kind of soul searching occurs and they're trying to do like, oh, well, we better figure out why we lost. Oh, it's because millions of evangelicals stayed home because Trump is an abortion demon. Then you know, like they're going to, they're going to have to move that will shove the Overton window back to the right, at least for the Republican party. Now the, the, the Overton window for the, for the Democrats will continue to move left. Um, the problem is, is that there's two solutions to this. Either we do complete polarization where it's right versus left and it's a pitched battle or the Republican party concedes and just goes to the left and is like, well, you know, we'll just be less left wing and then we'll browbeat conservatives and evangelicals into voting Republican because it's like, well, you could have the commies, you know, and so that's that's the strategy that Trump is using. And I think that long term voting for Trump is voting for your own genocide. And that's where I can see what you're saying, but where you say it's not a huge gamble. That's the only quip I would take about if you don't vote for Trump because of, of your reasons, then it's not a guarantee that when they soul search, they're going to say, well, it's clearly because evangelical stayed home. Therefore, we need to be more conservative, more godly to get evangelicals back because we are a fleeting group of people. So they may decide kind of like to double down and be like, you know what? We didn't win with evangelicals. Even if we had all of the evangelicals, we still could not have won, or we definitely won't win in the future because they're a lesser and lesser number. So instead of returning to more godly principles to get the evangelical vote, what we now need to do is just figure they're all lost and they're going to be like the Jehovah's Witnesses and abstain from voting. So now we need to uh, appeal to ultra populism and say, hey, do you want 1960s Democrat? Do you miss JFK? Do you miss you know, these other Democrats that were considered good and kind of mild and kind of middle of the road, blue dog Democrats. Do you want that? And that's what we're going to appeal to peel off from the left, because we're going to use the left as so far crazy that regular Democrats don't want that. They want to stay where they were. Well, they can stay where they were by voting Republican, because now we're the new old Democrat Party. So, I mean, you say it's not a gamble. But it really is because there's got to be enough like, you know, godless Catholics or secular people that say like, you know, I'm a Christian. Sure. Buddha's fine. Um, there's going to be enough like, you know, milk toast, weak Christians or people that call themselves Christians that will be like, well, that sounds good to me that the evangelical boat will just be written off together and no one will care about it. And, and I mean, that's a gamble. You can say it's not, but I mean, it, it is. It's, it's sad to think. So basically the, the black pill version of this is, Chris, do you want yourself and your family right now to be in concentration camps or do you want your children or grandchildren to be in your concentration camps so looking at it like in a black field chris version that's your choices like everyone's going to concentration camps do you want it to happen in this lifetime or the next one <laughs> yeah i mean that's not really a choice i mean i just you know it's like at that point i just check please <laughs>
I mean, but, I mean, that's really yeah. what we're talking about. I mean, like, you know, at this point, I'm going to vote my conscience, which, you know, precludes me from voting for a left wing ideologue like Trump. Wait, so is that going to be your final over, decision? Yeah, I think that's going to be my final decision. I'm, I, I, I've gone back and forth on it. Pastor Mark had a good argument about salt and light, but like this IVF thing and then hit him having to backpedal at like a politician would, you know, again, because he has absolutely no principles. Um, you know, he That's had to so backpedal, <laughs> he had to backpedal on the amendment four, and now he's like, Oh no, I'm not going to vote for amendment four. Well, and did he, he backpedal clearly, or did he listen to his constituents? Like, he, I mean, why he is that? listened to his, he listened so why he is that listen not to admired? his constituents. He listened to the, you know, professional pollster people who were like, look, man, you can be as crazy as you want when you get in, but you still have to pander to the evangelical vote until you do. And so I just, I don't see it as real. I don't see it as him learning a lesson. I see it as him being ultimately pragmatic and he's going to say anything just like any politician would to get elected. Okay. Well then by that metric though, since, I mean, it's fair to say he's a politician now, but you know, he wasn't, uh, you know, six years ago so now if if i say and, and i'm doing all the conceding conceding here and agreeing and da 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 I don't, it'd be nice for you to say okay he probably has one principle can you, can you just in a word just yes like sure i'm sure he has one principle like the things amazing nate said earlier um anyways but yes i will concede that, that he has at least one principle and that is oh like it's greed it's himself Trump. okay well yes. okay well if you take that stance about trump though you can basically never vote again because if he has been politician the least and has done the least flip flopping and has done basically what the metrics you put forth, he has done. It's like Republicans conservative, like it is vastly less evil than the Democrats. So Trump has flip flopped and done all this stuff and backtracking, and backpedaling vastly less than every other politician you and I have ever known um, in, in an office like a higher office. So so that means if you're not going to vote on Trump for those reasons. Uh, we should basically say you're you're never voting again, right? Because if you won't vote for Trump for that, who's done it, these things you have problems with the least by a million miles, you can never vote again. Is that fair to say? Unless things significantly change. No, because I, I don't buy the premise that Trump has flip-flopped less than other politicians. I think he's flip-flopped more. I think I can On demonstrate what? that. Well, well, demonstrate it because you keep saying it and be, you never have evidence. Like, like what's he flip-flopped on? Like you could probably find two or three things, and I'd probably agree I mean, with you. I'm just not but find with. find as many as anyone else. Well, okay, well that's fair to say. I mean, if you just don't want to deal with it, that, that's fair. You know, that's a like, good point. I mean, we could talk about it at a different time, but like you know, I mean, like here's the thing: is like I feel like I I feel like this oh. whole thing. Well, go ahead. Oh, well, I was gonna answer chat, but I I. I well, I'd say, Chris, I mean, I, I still come back to what you're saying. Like, um, after, like, I'm only a few months behind you, right? Or, or like one term behind you. So you're kind of checking out now. And I, I, I would have to do my own soul searching because, you know, ultimately Mark's, Mark's argument, I mean, it's the biblical argument, is going to stick with me for a really long time. And I'll have to think, do I want to take Chris's thing and just like white knuckle, like road to destruction? I'm not helping at, with this at all. Um, I'm not voting for the lesser evil. I'm voting for nothing. Um, or will I continue to vote Republican because for the foreseeable future, that will be the vastly less evil choice, even after Trump's in office, or out of office, or even if he gets in office. Um, that will be the lesser of the two evils by a million miles. Or, like I said before, I think if Trump doesn't win, or even if he does win, um, and, and unless something really significant changes, I, I may not care at all. I may just completely check out, like especially if he loses on this one. Um, and Pedal in chat says... How, how do I know if it's Lord, the Lord's will for me to go to a concentration camp? Because if it is, I will. Well, the way to know if it's the Lord's will, I'm joking, I'm joking, um, take it with a grain of salt and light. But if it's God's will for you to go into a concentration camp, the Democrats will win. That's how you know. Um, anyways, um, but but I mean, yeah, so I think Trump... Pragmatically, like, Trump's going to lose. Right? I mean, the, the polling is showing he's going to lose because he's he has to overcome the 4% cheating. And he isn't doing that, and he's not doing the ground game. This is why he lost in 2020, is because he refused to do the ground game in 2018. Well, and what then do you mean on by the ground back, game? I mean, like, 
hiring a million lawyers to be prosecuting like all of this voter nonsense well, in all well, of these I'm... counties. And so he has not done that and he refuses to do that because that's actually hard work. Instead of just making rally, instead of just going and doing rallies and having millions of people just be like flooding, you know, to your rallies and, you know, enjoying that. The hard work is actually like getting all of these Republican lawyers to go after individual municipalities that are doing individual voter fraud. And he's not going to deal with that. And that's what he didn't deal with in 2018. And that's what he didn't deal with in Pennsylvania and all these other places. And that is why he lost in 2020 is because he didn't feel like doing the hard work. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that you don't think Trump is Jesus and you don't think he's omniscient and, and you think he's just one guy. I'm, I'm going to just assume you think that about Trump. Um, I do, too, by the way. Um, so, I mean, you, you can't really fault the guy. Right. So, I mean, it, when he wasn't a politician, I think his shortcomings are, you know, he got bamboozled, he got lied to, like he, he's like a, a empty fish in a world of sharks. And, you know, he tried to hire and bring in close to him some good people, his close personal inner circle. Some of them were good. Some of them were really bad. And, you know, not having any idea how Washington works because he's not a politician, I think he got a lot of bad advice and he followed it, um, you know, meaning well, because these are the groups of people that people he trusts, says he can trust. And a lot of them turn out to be snakes. And also the RNC is supposed to do a lot of what you're talking about, like election polling, which, you know, if you believe what they're saying, like they've got hundreds of thousands of election watchers, lawyers. So like um, if you believe what the RNC says now, um, then it seems that, that they're on point for this election. But I think that's a lot of what went wrong in the last one um, is what you say. But I, to try to say that's all Trump's fault and, you know, he's lazy and he don't want to do the hard work like, man. It, you could I, like, I, OK, another assumption. We probably all hate the devil. Right. We probably hate Satan. I, I mean, I think it, we, we don't. I don't think I could say Satan is not a hard worker and he's lazy. Like I would give the devil his due and be like, you know what? Satan is evil and he sucks. He's a bad guy, but he's not lazy. He's probably working very hard, you know, like a devouring lion, seeking who he could devour and sneaking around and all this stuff. So the devil is probably out doing, you know, some pretty good hard work for evil. So even if you hate Trump, um, you could say, look, you could fault him for a lot of things, the things he talks about, the things he said, how his brash nature, shooting himself in the foot, all this sort of stuff. I don't think anyone could rightly say the guy is not a hard worker. And like, especially, even if you want to say he's not a hard worker, by comparison, he's a hard worker because look at everyone around him. Like the guy is constantly on the move. So if you want to say he misdirects his energy or something like that, maybe that could be fair. Um, and I think he's, you know, he's a quick studied, caught up to speed, realized a lot of people he couldn't trust, realized a lot of the crap, all, Paul Ryan, all this RNC stuff. Um, yeah, but to say he's not a hard worker, I think is just very short sighted and revealing that you just don't like Trump just because you don't like Trump. Um, any, anyways, it doesn't matter. I guess we'll see what happens. Oh, but the, the point I was trying to make earlier is, you know, I, I, I want Trump to have another chance. Because I think I legitimately think he was screwed out of the 2020 election. It was a complete blah, fraud. Um, and the guy needs his rightful term. Um, I liked living in his term. Hey, Everything so somebody was... has their hand raised, Nate. Who? I'm like Joe. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, come on up. And then we'll hear what you have to say and talk a minute. And then I have to run. I meant to run like 40 minutes ago. But yeah, so I mean, I think he needs a second term. He needs to be fulfilled. That will put some right in the world. And, you know, I liked living under his last term. I think I'll like living under his second term. If he turns out to completely flip and reveal himself as the Antichrist, you guys can all see I told you so. I don't think that's going to happen, though. But, uh, Joe, what's up, Joe? Well, I'd like to talk about hard work. None, none of you have really addressed what hard work looks like in real life. And that is you take the previous election, you map out who's on the fence, and as Republicans, you go door to door with a pamphlet and you say, let's talk about this. That's hard work. Everything else is cotton. Do you, do you have anything else you wanted to say on that? Yeah. Once we get I mean, talking, we may Trump not stop. doesn't <laughs> have a ground game. I mean, that's the whole thing is like, he just doesn't care. He'll do rallies all day because he shows up. <laughs> 
he does his thing, but organizing a ground game, that's the thing. And then people are like, well, the Republican Party no, should be doing that. I, I work for the Republican Party. I, I actually work with Pence and RFK. I, I do messaging. And I'm telling you guys, I've not always been a Republican, but those guys, they are locked and loaded. They're not done. They haven't even begun. Well, I certainly hope you're because right. It's only 60 days from the election. Well, um, I, I mean, I, th I don't know, Chris. I think you're you're <laughs> either you and Michael are, are like brothers from another mother or you, you are a Fed or you are Kamala Harris. <laughs> like just just you're just like he doesn't care. Like, but we just I just spent like 10 minutes telling you how it seems like he is hardworking and does actually give a crap. And then I cited my evidence or my sources. Um, you know, like from the RNC, right, and all these other places, and his team, um, and this army of lawyers and poll watchers and everything, and you're just like, but he doesn't have an army of poll watchers and lawyers. I'm like, but I, I just said he did. So, I mean, unless the RNC is, like, going all over national news and lying, which maybe they are, you can say that, but it seems like the, the criticism you just had is not valid. If you say so in the last election, sure, sure, I, I would probably agree with that, and I think the RNC bears a lot of responsibility, and I think him upon appointing... Uh, Romney McDaniel is right. is one of the most. He was the one who in to a point he runs the RNC when he's president, so you can't yeah, say uh, oh the RNC messed up because Trump runs the RNC. That's how that works. Well, no, it's I, not. No, I'd like to share if I can. Sure. People people who run it include messaging from Tulsi, Nikki, RFK, uh, good people who have been successful. And will block and load and win. I'm telling you, I have I I used to vote Democrat. I, I was I am a social conservative because I I'm a social worker. <laughs> but that doesn't mean anything anymore. What's gonna happen is power is gonna win and we need power to win because we are milk toast right now. Uh, globally. I'm done. Um yeah, Chris. I mean, I, I don't. I don't know, man. I mean, it, it just it just seems like. I mean, <laughs> I don't want to say you should read some Stephen King books or anything, but I mean, I, I don't know. I think like Trump derangement syndrome light um, may have gotten a hold of you. Like again, there's valid criticisms. I'll give you valid criticisms. I've I've given valid criticisms, um, but that's not one of them, right? And it's like, well, you know, he's in charge, so it's kind of like you know, blaming God for a, a traffic accident. It's like, why do you blame God for killing your people because someone got in a drunk driving accident? Drunk, blame the drunk driver. Don't blame Chevy, and then don't blame God. Like, if you want to say, oh, God created everything. Okay, fine. That, that's, that's a fair criticism. If you want to say, okay, I'm going like four degrees away from the person who actually caused it because technically God created molecules, then blame God. You wouldn't do that with anything else, but fine, do that. Uh, good luck with you and God. So it's like, well, Trump is president. So, you know, he's technically ex exhibits great uh, authority and, and weight in the RNC and across the government and all these agencies. But realistically, so if you want to blame God, like Ford, or, uh, <laughs> Freudian slip, if you want to blame Trump for like four degrees away from something that happened just because he's the top of the ticket and he's the guy. Well, sure, you wouldn't do that in most other instances of life. But if you want to, like, I think, unverily blame Trump for four degrees away from what actually happened. I guess do that. But if you want to act like, you know, one man can single handedly run every department, in the federal government, make sure there's no waste, fraud and abuse, which I think he cut a lot of. Remember that for every new law you propose, you have to take away two. That was a great idea. I love that idea. How can you not love that idea? Um, it's rhetorical. You love that idea um, anyway. But to act like he can single handedly clean up every single agency and run the RNC while he's constantly like, you know, doing hard work on behalf of, you know, governments dealing with foreign governments, dealing with Iran, dealing with ISIS. Remember that? That's something Obama said would take like eight to 10 years to beat. He did it in a month and a half, under two months. So, I mean, these are big things that are taking up presumably a significant amount of time. And now, while he's also dodging bullets, too, well, he didn't dodge the bullet, he got hit by a bullet. So while, while the guy's also getting shot at, like, he has a lot more stuff going on in his life than you or me or probably anyone else we know. So, I mean, yes, technically, could he? I mean, the appointments kill me, right? The, the Romney McDaniel, that was dumb. 
and he should not have tried to play nice with Romney uh, for votes or whatever that he never got anyways. So I but will concede that is, is the a one who criticism. also backed her the second time when she was up for re-election and then she had to step down. Like, he just is bad at this. See, that's a good criticism. Um, but still, all the other stuff... Oh, Prashant's here now. All right, Prashant, I got like three minutes and then I have to go. I've been trying to leave for an hour. <laughs> we we need to start by getting rid of Merrick Garland and clean up the DOJ. I, I've been involved with them for three years now. Hey, Prashant, I'll be quiet. Good to see well, you well, guys. Well, go ahead and finish your point if you want and then we'll hear Prashant oh. in a second. <laughs> I just wanted to say I, I have had to work with not voluntarily with the DOJ um, because of their ignorance around school choice. And Merrick Garland is evil. Uh, we, we need to clean house. We really do. I'm done. I completely agree. Prashant, what's up? How are you doing? Uh, better than I... I have to give the Presbyterian party line, but I agree with uh, Ms. Joe B. There has to be a lot of it, a lot of all of this begins with the Department of Justice. Uh, yeah, I mean, things like that, Chris. Like, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I get your argument on paper, but if, and, and this probably won't happen, right? Because, you know, one of, the, one of the greatest weaknesses, which hopefully Trump has done better at now, is learning who he can and can't trust and has like a core group of people who have gone to prison for him, not because they did anything wrong, because they rightly claimed presidential immunity. And when Democrats did the exact same thing, not having the right to you know, claim presidential immunity, they're completely scot-free when they actually should be in jail for violating law. But all the people in his cabinet inner circle who rightly claimed you know, this immunity um, ended up going to prison anyway. So like these people are Navarro, Bannon, these people are like tough, they're tested, they're like true. Um, they're not wavering on those convictions, at least, because they went to jail for him. So that's pretty good metal tested. Um, so if he has enough of those people now, and I think he does, to give good advice and good counsel. Um, I like to think that, you know, I mean, he vows, that's one of his promises, right? To go cleaning house from day one, because we see like, you know, Millie, all these other people that are making military people wear like high heels for sensitivity training and all this other crap. Like he's vowing like day one to start cleaning house. So if he does that, that's a great test that he's off to a good start. If he could put RFK um, as attorney general, that would be great. So, I mean, yes, abortion is murder. Um, RFK is very pro-choice, and I do not like that at all about the guy. But does that mean that I think he would be a bad AG? No. I think but, if he so, was like a turd. Well, let me well, ask well, just, you this. Well, hang on. Just, just saying real quick. On the big stuff, right, like all the evils Garland and the Biden administration has done, I think RFK would be busy his entire term cleaning up that mess, and abortion would barely be a blip on the radar, if at all. So that's me, the kind me, of stuff. Let me ask you this, though. So one of the things that Garland has done has been go after pro-life protesters hardcore, like literally like sending the SWAT team out to their houses, arresting yeah. them for praying at clinics, throwing the book at them with these like ridiculous laws that they've passed, um, you know, and, and jailing people for essentially like, you know, blocking access to clinics and things like that. Now, if RFK gets in there, let's just say theoretically he becomes attorney general. And of course, he's an abortion maximalist, right? RFK is for abortion up to nine months and possibly even after. OK, now, if RFK is an abortion maximalist and he continues the same policies as Merrick Garland, going after pro-lifers, tossing them in jail, harassing their families, destroying their their livelihoods, will you criticize Trump? Uh, of course, I don't think a that would ever happen, even with this. And really? again, you're just you wait, 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 wait. The the question was, do I think RFK would toe the line Merrick Garland is? and like prosecute like uh, pro-lifers for praying at abortion clinics. No, I think he has his convictions. So, which I'm going to talk about in a second, um, cause CNN would disagree with you, Chris. But, um, so I think let's just say he wanted abortion, just like Garland, like, you know, bring the baby out, baby's fully alive, have it killed anyway. If that were his position, I still don't think he would go after people 
who are like praying outside abortion clinics and stuff like that, because there's a difference in having your personal conviction versus prosecuting and persecuting people for having an opposite conviction. And I don't get that sense from RFK. So I think his abortion policies are atrocious um, on, his, on his own, but I don't think he has the will to try to persecute people with a different opinion like Garland does. That being said, you said up until birth. So, you know, in five seconds, I Googled this. So, you know, trust but verify, Reagan, Trump likes Reagan. Um, okay, so from CNN.com, right? Not a fan. From CNN.com, RFK Jr. says he supports abortion limits at fetal viability and differs. Uh, well, he differs from his running mate. But so at fetal viability. So the, what is that? 24 weeks? 20, 22, 24? So 24 weeks is apparently his position on abortion, which is not good. I hate it. But it's not what you said, which is up till birth. 24 weeks, I think, is fetal viability. That is a significant way from, what, 36 weeks to birth? So, I mean, it, I don't know if you're, I don't know where you're getting your information, but, but just be accurate, bro. Just be accurate. I'll help you. Let me 24 help you weeks is up to the time of birth, Nate. Well, okay. Sorry. So fetal viability. Okay. So, yeah. so by fetal viability, when that you say means up a until full birth, baby, that means a right, baby right, right. with, you know, the whole when, kit and caboodle, man. But when it you is say a, up it is a wicked position, here's the deal. Well, well let me, the Kings on. of Israel had the high what? places. The, what I see with Trump right now is that it is a difference between voting for Ahab, with who is Kamala, and voting for, you know, Jeroboam, son of Nabat, which is Trump. Okay. When, words have meanings, right? So when you say up until birth, and then you say, no, no, 24 weeks is, like, is exactly what I meant. I don't think anyone listening, even if that's what you meant. I don't think anyone else thought that. So everyone else is thinking like, oh, nine months pregnant, about to have a baby. RFK says, kill it. Um, that's what everyone thinks you mean when you said that. So if that's not but what that you meant. that is what that means. Oh, 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 okay. Fetal viability is not what that means. So if a baby can survive at 24 weeks outside its mama, um, then that is 24 is not 36, right? So if a baby can survive at 24 weeks, it seems like based on CNN, who is not exactly liking RFK, um, he says, no, don't abort a baby after 24 weeks, which would mean from 24 to 36 weeks where everyone else is saying, yeah, kill that baby, have abortion parties, like, you know, pray Satan, all this other stuff they're doing. RFK is like, no, I don't support that. So that's, that's different than what you said. So if you technically mean, well, fetal vi uh, viability, that's what I actually meant if it could survive on its own. No one thought you meant that when you said that. If you ever have any doubts about abortion, spend a couple hours in your local NICU, your hospital intensive care nursery. I guarantee your your mind will be changed. Oh yeah, I mean, I think people. I, I think before they have abortions, like you know, the women should be made not not like the diagrams, not the not like the cute cartoon renderings where it shows it, but like the, like women who want abortions should be made to watch like the ten minute video of you know an actual baby at like like 20 something weeks where you know uh, they shove a needles and like pitchfork things with like tweezers and pinchers in there and they rip the thing apart they rip off its arms they rip its feet off they dissect the thing inside the mom and pull it out piece by piece yeah that's it what is, rfk is for it is I, I don't disagree it is freaking disgusting and every single woman should have their eyes pried open and be like, this is what you want to do. This is what you are doing. Which, Chris, Nate, do Nate, your... the, men, the men too. Come on now. Oh, sure, Wait. sure. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 sure. Men too. Anyone that supports it. Like, sure, that, that's a fair point. But, I, I mean, I guess I meant, thought women because they're the one who's actually having the thing done. But, yes, men who are behind them, who are paying for it, who are supporting them, who are pressuring them into it. Yes, uh, that's a good, that's a fair point, Joe. So, yes, I, I agree with that. They should all be forced to watch this thing. And they'd be like, there, do you still want to do it? And the ones that say yes, God have mercy. I mean, God have mercy anyway. But So that's why I don't like the RFK and the Gab Gabbards. I like a lot of their points on economy, on strength, on security. Um, I think Gabbards is pretty good. Like, you know, it's basically Trump talking on those issues that I like and I care about deeply. Um, but then their social stuff. I don't like it. And I agree that it's basically resetting 
to the, the traditional Democrat party of like the 60s um, with even more leniency on abortion. So that's the fair criticism of my view, Chris. Um, and now we just have to decide, um, you know, do we go along with it and choose the, the vastly lesser, lesser of evil or do we plow through and, and just say, no, absolutely not. And um, yeah, that's where we are. So, I, you know, I'm not going to. Yeah, go ahead, Joe. I could stand corrected, but I believe Tim Walz is very much in support of abortion. Prove me wrong. Of course, Tim Walz is in support of abortion. Where did you ever hear he wasn't? Well, that's my point. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that is my point as well, is we literally have every politician that we're supposed to vote for is in favor of in abortion. Favor of abortion. Yeah, that's the problem. That is the exact so, the, the problem. These are your two options. Do you want to watch the car crash in slow motion or do you want to watch it in fast forward? Right. That's the option. Right. That's fine. Uh, except one is very fast motion and one is very slow motion. But yes, yes, that's a good point. And it's like, you know, as a Christian, um, I, I, I don't think at that point it would be right to say, you know, do Chris's plan. Because if Chris's plan would actually work, then I would I would encourage everyone to do that. But I, I think the chances of Chris's plan, um, for those who weren't here a minute earlier, um, that's basically don't vote for anyone and become a Jehovah's Witness and, and just not vote in this election until they start taking conservatives and Christians godly values seriously, which if it worked, do that. The chance, but it could backfire just as easy. And I don't think Chris thinks that, but I think that. So it's, it's yeah, it's basically like to be more practical or more closer to home. It's like, hey, you know, we're going to we're going to start around. I don't even know on the spot analogies, but but basically if there's something more in your face, not like um. You know, because I, I don't know anyone that's got abortion. I don't personally know anyone that's got an abortion or related to an abortion. I um, bet you do. For, for or well, that I know of in forever. And and we probably don't have family members that have recently had abortions or anything like that either. So to get more closer to home, it's like, you know, one side, the Democrats are like, hey, if you find a Christian, uh, we're going to round them up if we get elected and kill them. Versus, uh, you know, Trump is like, I don't know. Uh, you know, let's outlaw Christianity. But... If they don't, uh, if they violate it and if they still practice Christians, we'll find them $50. And it's like, no, they're both anti-God. They're both anti-Christian. Vote for neither. It's like, wait, if you vote for neither, there's a guaranteed chance that the round all Christians up and kill them is going to win versus Christians have to pay 50 bucks if they get caught. It's like one is they're both evil, They're both, but one is vastly more evil. So, you know, being someone that likes life and likes living, I'll be like, well, I'm not going to vote to be killed. So I guess I'll vote for this one, and hopefully we'll figure out a way to fix it or move. Anyway, that is a very hypothetical scenario. But okay, guys, does anyone have? Yeah, go ahead. One question before you uh, before I, I I know you have to go. You kind of uh, wrap this up. Yeah. But I was wondering if you guys had already spoken about this, or if you hadn't, how you feel about uh, the prayer invocation by Harmi Dillon at the Republican National Convention. I didn't, uh, you're, you're really muffled. Um, I, I heard what you said. I, well, I, heard, I heard enough. I, I don't know the name. Which one was that? Was that the Jewish person? Harmeet or Dillon, the, the, the Sikh lady. The Trump oh. lawyer, Harmeet. Oh yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was abominable. And there's also like a Jewish person out there and you know, everyone like threaded it very, very nicely in a way to be like, uh, you know, to, to a way to take theology out of it. And by the fact that they're calling it invocations and all this other stuff. Mm. Um, I thought it was great, though, when it was like the, the black pastor was was he Baptist? I don't remember. But it's like the black pastor got there is like, in Jesus name. I'm like, yeah, take that everyone else in the room. <laughs> but at least someone was standing on their conviction. So, yeah, I don't like it. I mean, it's exactly what Chris said. It's like a slow decay. It's just, you know, do you want a slow decay? Because the slower the decay is, um, that that seems like there's more time to change things. In a rapid decay, it's like, well, you, you better. And that's funny, Chris. That's another point. We'll end on this. Um, you guys are making fun of, like, you know, the, the prepper talk at the beginning. If anyone's curious about that, you're making fun of the prepper talk. And like, oh, that's crazy. That'll never happen. And now here we are talking about we're one election away from like that stuff actually being needed. So it's like, pick a side, right? You're kind of like all over the place. It's like, look, if you think the world's going to be fine, no need to prep. If you think, uh, you know, this is like hastening the demise of our society and all this other stuff. I don't know. Maybe grab some rice and beans. 
<laughs> what do you think, Chris? If you don't vote Trump, are you going to get rice and beans and start stocking up? <laughs> um, well, you should have been getting rice and beans in the first place. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't like rice and beans. Um, and that would probably kill me anyway. So anyway, so um, no, I wanted to hear from Prashant. Okay. Prashant, you have any words of wisdom? Well, um, if your nation is broken, it's because God has broken it. We can't hear you. I said that if your nation is broken, it is because God has broken it. God is going to smash America with the rod of iron that Jesus wields. Right, and to that end, this is my water filter, I promise. To that end, when it is time for the Lord to smash America, um, I would like it to be the Lord who's smashing America, not a bunch of Christians misguided um prematurely trying to smash America before God is ready to smash America. Um, <laughs> and uh, then we can, you know, have four hours of philosophical discussions about that tomorrow. <laughs> but, all right, everyone. <laughs> have a good day. Right. What, Chris? So that's fair. Prashant, hit me up. We'll, uh, we'll chat. All right. Take care, everyone. See you guys later. <laughs>